Hi y'all, back we are again streaming Revorian for your entertainment. So back in Rusty's Galaxy, best server around, you can bet your money on it. And we'll keep proceeding in our path towards the center. So, first I want to start checking a little bit around this area. I need to do more trades. I depleted all the money I made, so I barely have one and a half million at this point. Not even two millions. So, and since I need money, I better start looking for some trades. Give me just a few seconds to share with you guys um, to. <clears throat> okay, sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Um, let's go then. Time to start looking for some money. Let's jump sectors. I need to find uh, sectors with trades, with interesting items to sell and trade to rack up this money real quick. Seems like a battle. It's a hostile sector, apparently. 
Let's see. Mm, 14 ships of the pirates. I wonder if this is the Rome sector. Uh, there's a claimable, a claimable asteroid here. Another one there. So it's possible that it's the Rome sector. I don't know if I should waste time dealing with all these guys. Probably yes. Let's see. Let's deal with that guy first. He's rather lonely up there, so let's take that pirate out. Pirates are among the are amongst the most bottom feeders of all enemies and NP, enemy NPCs. They are the easiest and most common. But basically, you only have either the Zotan, the alien Zotan, or several random, randomly generated pirate factions. Uh, all the others are just regular factions that can either be hostile or not, and that you usually can work on the reputation. But pirates are generally very easy in comparison to other any other factions under the same sector. They are all converging on my location. Let's let the shields recharge a little. You're very lonely in there, too. Let's party a little. Dead. That was fast. This guy is a little more armored, so it would be preferable to face him alone, without allowing for backup to help him.
get out of here. Shields are almost gone. Ha! You're waiting for people. Let's go. How many are there? A ton, huh? Better get away to let the shields recharge. Ooh. Come on, let's pick up those modules. Okay, let's let the shields recharge a little. And and now let's get back in there. Take down a few more pirates. And in the end we'll see how the wrecks are and if it's worth it to salvage it or not. For now, 
let's get ready to take these guys out. Well, we might as well finish them up, there's just so few of them now that we might as well get it over with. Just watch the shields against this plasma turrets and let's take them out. Uranium. How many are left? Four? Okay, four small ones. Let's take care of these remaining pirates. And... Then let's go claim a couple of asteroids.
so you can play around with uh, your positioning to force them to stop shooting like this now they will stop shooting to avoid hitting their own pals so Hi, Kitsuna. Um, yes, I can mine Organite because... Uh, Demion did, did me the, gre the great favor of sending my way a little bit of Organite and a couple of of turrets for Organite. Uh, I don't think he sent me miners yet, but by now I should be able to to go find some Organite salvaging turrets, or mining turrets. Um, but for that, I need to go to the center. And I'm not there yet. server today seems to be a little more a little more laggy possibly because it's Saturday and there's a lot more people playing games today so there's probably a much bigger load also of players which is true there, are, there is a lot more people online today Yes, um, some of those swirls can be simply iron, which at some point gets so rare on wrecks that they end up standing out in the middle of all the yellow, green and blue. But, but sometimes it's even pieces of organite or or orange modules, or even colors, sometimes. Sometimes it also happens, little bottle, bottles of, bottles of, uh, of paint for, for your builds. Uh, this is salvaging. More pirates? Yeah, more pirates. Yeah, it was possibly modules or weapons.
So from this wreck alone, I got, I don't know, four or five modules. Probably weapons too. There they are. So, Ashashin is fighting the AI, he's asking for help, but I suppose he's probably really far, actually he's not that far, but by the time I get there, they'll probably have the AI almost dead, so no point in going there just to get the loot. Um, mm -mm, let's kill these pirates. Is that all? The two of you are still there, huh? Ooh, a blue module. Sometimes they despawn a little too quickly at this point. But I'm gonna risk it. And you, it's just you. You're the only one. Damn it. Too much speed. Hmm, it's are not registering. At all. I'd say the fight with the AI went south. <laughs> For sure. I better move the ship, yeah. Twenty one of twenty four. Of course, Saturday evening, server almost at max load. So Let's see if TV is on, is on it. He probably is. He was online, so he was playing the game. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Sorry. So server went down again, and I think Devious is already resetting it. Should be relaunching any moment. He was playing the game, he was online, so should be a few seconds. It's a good thing on this server, Devious, uh, the administrator, is always present. Uh, the server itself has an auto-restart script, in case it goes down and nobody's there. And... Yeah, backup. And it's always really fast to jump back up again.
Yeah, it did a nosedive. Indeed. But... You can always tell when, when it's going to, to fall. Okay, so I'm back near the wrecks. And the three pirates are still coming in. Okay. Aquamarine. Now, um, uh, Kitsuna, this morning, uh, I screamed for a bit and I actually managed to find an abandoned cranium, cranium mine. So, regarding cranium, we should be fine too, since now we should be getting cranium over time. Uh, there were some changes uh, because mines, abandoned mines, uh, were not very well balanced and uh, there were a lot of them first and then there were too few of them and they were too cheap and now they are too expensive but now I think we got uh, a balance that hopefully it will work but they are a little more expensive than what they were yesterday so previously we were being able to buy uh, to buy or better yet to reactivate to refurbish uh, abandoned mines for 1 million credits and that was regardless of of the ore they were producing iron titanium neonite trinium or zanion and now uh, they are a little more expensive so they start iron at 1 million i think uh, but then they grow in price exponentially so zanion i think it's 10 million i'm not sure i know trinium is 5 million zits to reactivate and I believe DV is also balanced the outcome, so how much um, how much resources you get uh, and how frequently uh, from those mines. I think that was also that also got a little tweak um, because at one million credits, it was really an amazing investment. Now, to reactivate a mine, I basically depleted my bank account. <laughs> so, it will still pay up in the long run, for sure. But it will make you think twice before actually spending it. Solar pistol. What what kind of color is that? Solar pistol. Infinity light salmon. That's a great salmon, huh? Infinity light. That's not just any salmon. It has to be super thin to be Infinity Light. To get that title, hmm, it's not just any salmon. Well, one last ship. Let's get it. Let's get it. This is why I love cannons. I can basically snipe them 
from 10 miles out. My ship got a little scratch. Let's repair it. Let's see. Everything good? I guess so. We lack a weapon. Salvaging, mining, salvaging, salvaging. We could place another mining to have two. Or we can place another turret. It all depends. So, Demian so sent me these turrets. These turrets belong to him. These Zogonite turrets, they are all offensive turrets. So, I think it was this one that got loose. Okay. We have a ton of yellow blips on the map. Uh, I should probably probably investigate a few of them and also a few green ones to try and find a few trades. Although we are not seeing any green ones at all. in close proximity, but it's also not displaying the hyperdrive range, so we'll need to jump to fix that. Uh, let's go check, let's see. This is a good cluster. Let's jump! So Kitsune, have you started doing that ship that you told me about? Is it finished? Strange. A yellow blip with nothing inside. Hmm. I don't believe it. There has to be something hidden around here. This is a little strange. I know there is something hidden. It's probably out of sight because of all this fog. But there is something out there. Thing is, since you have no visual reference to find it... Well... Let's jump again.
we need to go there for the delivery. I'm not sure if Yeah. This morning the chat was not updating properly while I was streaming, so I only saw most of the messages people posted when I finished. So, yeah. Terret Merchant. Seven of the same ones. Ho! Oh. Zef Sly Fox is still moving to try and help with the fight with the EAI. I guess... They are going for some co-op fight against the boss. I hope everything works out. Because I'm in the middle of a pirate sector, I guess. Pirates? Yeah. Pirates. I'm not gonna fight you. I'm gonna meet the smuggler to deliver the goods he asked for the mission easy delivery which for some reason is not showing man I can almost bet that I'm gonna get there and there's nothing there because the mission somehow vanished again so I'll need to find a smuggler again to restart it. Shouldn't be too hard. And I can almost be certain that the delivery location will be the same, because it's the second time this happens. And it's always been this the delivery place, so let's see. For now, let's go back on the track, looking for... Let's see... This is starting to look very strange. Let's go down. Abhorrent pirates. They really, really are abhorrent. For some reason, they like being abhorrent. Haha. <laughs> I don't know if I have a trading system to spare.
still being calculated, finally. Okay, so we've been jumping south. We've crossed the equator. This is the center. Border should be here. No idea where the gate is yet. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, 10 sectors trade routes. That's crazy. Ultra tech trading system, legendary. Shows tradings, trading routes for the last 10 sectors. Oh, yeah. Nothing special. <laughs> So, let's jump like right there, and there. Double launcher turret. Twenty percent chance of penetrating shields is good. Independent targeting, synchronized weapons. 
fire rate 0 0.8, not bad. But those 20% shield penetration are great. And... Let's go there. <laughs> Thanks, Chromatics. It's not bad. I like it. But... I spent... Probably... I don't know, an afternoon doing it. But... Um, but I think... I've done sh other ships that I like better. So, seems like green dots are nowhere to be found. Possibly because I'm not using a radar module. using a radar upgrade, but not... Yeah, but this should be enough to show me This is an empty sector with a jump gate connecting to the gate network for a friendly faction. So it might be a good place to build a small base of operations, make a small production chain since it's completely empty, not even asteroids. So shouldn't bring too much of a load on a server and should be also be easy to navigate. So it's a possibility, but first I wanted to actually 
start finding some Zanyan. Without it, I can't build the, the actual ship I have in my head. A completely new design. And I've had I've had this design in my head for the past week. And I haven't made it yet. Because I wanna make it in survival. I don't wanna go to creative and do it there. But it's getting hard to do it. Seems like we are in Zanian territory. Yes. Well, this one it's not exactly the smallest of smallest, but yeah, it's small enough. Um Let's see. But I have uh, a few other models of this same ship that are designed to be nimble fighters. So I guess I'm not harvesting anything. Uh, let's see. Um, Rhenium. It should be able... No. Ah, Neonite. No, it shouldn't be able to. Okay, but I think I have... I think I have Trinium mining turrets. Well, uh, to, share, to share the XML, uh, I'm not sure how, unless you would actually join the server, or you're willing to wait for the workshop to be set up. Let's place it so that's... I think two quarters, let's transform it. It's gonna lose the color, but we'll fix it when we get black. For now, let's place the dark gray. And mining turret of Trinium. Doesn't support more, are you sure? Well, chromatics, I can try to look uh, uh, seriously, I can try to see if I find a way to to, to share the file, but um, I can tell you that at some point when the, the, when the workshop is set, I'll probably share several of these designs. Um, for now, 
I believe I can share with people in the same server as I. Um, if I share the permissions, people can enter the build menu and save the design on their own on their own menu. Let's take salvaging, salvaging, and this one belongs to Demian. This legendary one. So let's take Neonite or Cranium four hundred and two or one zero nine for forty four percent efficiency or thirty seven. Okay, let tick rate five seconds. Five seconds. You're going out because you're made of Neonite. And I'm gonna place you as a mining turret so that we can mine some Zanyan yes you should Kitsuna um, seriously I already told you um, don't don't have a problem with it just go through the through the discord channel and join our server uh, I'll provide some support I'll throw in some resources your way to make to make things easier the server itself, I think, at this point, uh, is set up in a way that new players get some increased resources to be able to build uh, a proper ship at first, including some Neonite to be able to make some shield generators. And you have a friendly community on this server, uh, for the most part, and there's always people willing to help newcomers, so... The door is always open. You already know it. I've already said it a million times. You just have to go through the Discord channel to read the announcements, download the mod pack, and get the address for the server. I can post the address for the server, but there's no point since there's no way to log without the mod pack. So you would always have to go to the Discord channel first. And of course, a game like this, with so much creativity, at some point it's gonna have um, a workshop for sure. And... Obviously, there's gonna be hundreds, if not thousands, of designs available for download. You can already find some beautiful ships out there in the forums. Ships that people made. Some based on, on ships from sci-fi series. Others completely original. Some very neat jobs. Some very neat works out there. And as you can see, for example, today 
it's Saturday. You've been you've been in my stream for the past few days, Kitsuna, and you know uh, there's always 10, 11, 12 people online for the most part. And when it comes when it comes to the weekends, the server gets like this, almost at full capacity. So there's already quite a, a good community on this server, particularly. And from what I see on other servers, they are also getting increased numbers of people across across the years, across the days. So. Um, the game is actually drawing more people as time goes by because it's it's actually fun it allows for a lot of creativity and it mixes two concepts that people really like the x the x concept and the building and crafting concept And finally, I'm getting some Zanyan. Now, I'm not gonna waste a lot of time uh, mining Zanyan because I rather invest my time doing some trading and exploration since um, with a little luck. I might be able to find some abandoned Zanyan mine. Of course, for that, first, I need to assemble 10 million credits. The trade module that Demian sent me a little while ago, thanks Demian, should really help out on that, since the, mo the module I had first um, was a yellow one, so it would only display the last two sectors. And of course, uh, that would make me completely skip a lot of great, great trades. Uh, but he sent me this orange module, and it's a six sectors uh, orange module. They can be four, five, or six. So, this should really, really help out at this point. Okay. Let's just finish this little piece. Kitsuna, didn't you say that you had a ship design in your head that you wanted to make? That you had gotten a lot of ideas from the f from the last few days streams that you saw, and had a ship in your head to do. Well, I think it's time you start doing it. I'm just kidding. Do it at your own pace whenever you want. But you really should. Game is really great uh, for people who really like to build stuff, as you as you've been seeing. You can get really creative, um, and I don't know if you actually seen this yesterday. I don't know if you were still around, but I spent almost two hours yesterday. I think even more. I think it was more close to two and two and a half hours fiddling around with my ship, trying to figure out why the hell the fighters were refusing to leave the hangars, and trying to understand why. And if it, if it could possibly be because of... I know that when a single piece of the, of the surface where the exit is placed is covered, the fighters won't exit. 
So I spent two hours breaking the ship apart to try and see what was the problem. Pulling the angers more to the left and more to the right and shrinking and stretching and whatever for two and a half hours. And then finally, after two and a half hours, I realized that I had no pilots aboard. So yeah, that's why they weren't leaving the angers. So I just placed it all back up where it ori originally was and all of a sudden I hired some pilots and ahoy they go! Yeah, yeah, I think you were already out. Um, I was crazy looking at the ship and oh my god, oh, what the hell, why, the, why don't the fighters come out? And then I started reworking all this, all this part of the ship, taking all this out and picking up the anger and stretching and pulling it more uh, lower and upper down, left, right, stretching. <laughs> Nothing was working. And then all of a sudden I said, eh, I don't care. It's probably glitched. I'll think about it later. And two minutes later, I go to a station to hire some crew. And bling! Ah, I forgot about the pilots. By that point, I had breaking my ship apart and remade it again for at least three times so felt like an idiot at that point of course but oh well i guess i am an idiot let's visit this exclamation point and It would be cool if I could find a faction to start doing some trade. It's still being calculated. Yeah, it happens. But I've said it a lot. Uh, I, I think you probably all have already heard me say it that. Um, angers should be completely unimpeded. So the exit surface, this surface, needs to be completely unobstructed. And it's not just the blue middle part, the edge too cannot have nothing on it. If it does, the, fire, the, the fighters won't leave the anger. So I was looking at this and thinking, oh, Man, it's gotta be that little corner over there, that's because they, they are not coming out, so BANG! I started breaking the ship apart to remove that, and then it didn't work just the same. And then I proceeded to stretching the anger up, down, left, right, reworking the entire sides of the ship, placed the anger lay, uh, lay, laying down horizontally with the exits over here to see if that fixed it, nothing was working. Eventually I gave up, and then I hired some pilots. Ha! Uh, jumping! Speaking of which, uh, I'm thinking I haven't found uh, Zotan this time around a single time, I think. I think Devious lowered the spawn rate for, for Zotan, probably. 
there was a time where they were really annoying. They were spawning almost five every five minutes on every sector. Uh, but now I don't see them at all. So the Yogyo pirates keep coming around. And who are these guys getting attacked? The Doa Bahu! Aha! The Doa Bahu Common Health! Doa Bahu Common Wealth are gonna be very thankful when I take down these pirates. I wonder who comes up with these names. But whoever he is deserves a prize. Done. And you need to die too. Well, I'm not, uh, I have to be honest, I've never been much of a fan for railguns. Although, uh, I find myself using them because they are so OP at this point. But I much rather prefer cannons. It's just that at this point, uh, I don't know what's going on, but railguns seems seem to multiply damage every block every block they go through. So. Instead of reducing damage each block they go through, they are instead multiplying it, which is crazy. So, yeah. I don't like it that much because it's hard to have a notion uh, where they are hitting and, and if you're making contact or not. And also because the rate of fire is so random from turret to turret that exactly because of that it's hard to aim. You don't know exactly when it's going to fire unless you spend the entire fight turning it on and off to control the timings. Which Incidentally, is what I do with the cannons, but but with cannons you have the advantage that you can be firing them from much further away, so you are not pressured by enemies firing at you or having to watch your shields or maneuvering, so you can pay more attention to turning the cannons on and off to to better control uh, the sync between the different turrets. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, a lot of blue indeed. Let's see what did we pick up. So, we picked up automated turret system. It provides 115 workforce for the gunners. We've picked up apparently some radar upgrade, some generator upgrade, and also a few weapons. Probably 
a quad bolter turret. And the devil Tesla turret. And I don't know what else. So yeah. For example, that over there is iron. Um, what are we going to do with all these wrecks? I guess we can send the salvaging crew. Let's make the salvager salvage. more wrecks before they all vanish there yeah I don't know if you had seen this, seen me do this before, Kitsuna, but basically uh, you have a lot of different types of, of fighters, as you know, uh, and and basically for every type of turret, uh, of turret weapon, like um, cannons, uh, uh, chain guns, bolters, uh, Tesla turrets, uh, all that, each of those can be a type of fighter. And you also have salvaging fighters and mining fighters. The thing of fighters is that the best fighters, the, the best material fighters, in terms of like fighters made of trinium or zanion or even organite, um, and with the best weapons, uh, it, for example, purple fighters made of zanion can be very, very expensive. Uh, over 3 millions in price per unit and they are very very uh, weak in terms of, of life uh, so they can get damaged very easily and can get destroyed very easily but at 3 millions per fighter it can come out really expensive if you lose a whole squad of, of 12 fighters uh, so not only that, but you can actually, for example, I can choose one of my fighters and I can actually board it and pilot the fighter. A very strange fighter, as you can see. <laughs> it looks like it's missing some pieces, but they are very weak and because it's the AI that controls the fighters, what happens is that it tends not to um, not to focus the fire as much as a player would do. Uh, the, the fighters still focus on a single target, you give them the orders, 
but when you're talking about offensive fighters like like chain gun turrets, uh, chain gun fighters, or whatever type of offensive fighter, uh, they drop down really easily. Uh, NPCs can can mow them down with relative ease, unless you have a gigantic swarm of them. Uh, and even if you do, a lot of them will still drop and will always drop in uh, in a fight. And if you have the best of them at 3 million per fighter, it comes out really expensive. So basically, what I'm saying is, I don't use fighters for combat at all. Uh, I only use the fighters for what you saw me doing over here. So after the fight is over, I release my salvagers and tell them to salvage because it's a lot faster than if I do it alone. And a couple of squads of salvagers can really mow down Rex real quick. And I also used to have miners, uh, miner fighters, mining fighters. Uh, to do some mining and those are the two things I actually use the fighters for uh, This time I actually bought some repair fighters to see What can I do with them, but if you noticed I haven't bought a single combat fighter uh, Not only because they get destroyed rather easily but also because uh, they are still a little bit glitchy and they tend to be uh, demanding on the server and if you release them and use them in combat there's a chance you'll be causing a lot of lag for all the other players on the server so I avoid doing that at this point doesn't mean that later um, after the game is still in early access uh, we've, we've talked about that so of course, I expect it to become better on all these issues, so I expect the fighters to have better survivability in combat, uh, so that we can actually use them in combat. I expect some tweaks also into pricing, uh, because, come on, I mean, these fighters, for example, these repair fighters, legendary titanium repair fighters, they cost me... Uh, 1.7 million each so it's not uh, cost effective to use them for combat uh, because even if you're extremely lucky you'll always lose one or two or three in every combat so those things still need to be balanced but more important than that is to make things balanced in a way that will allow for uh, for um, for you to be able to use your fighters whenever you want without impacting the other players games uh, which which at this point it still happens a lot um, they tend to cause if you use a lot of them and especially if you use them in combat it tends to cause a lot of lag and a lot of sinking problems to to your sector and to other players in the vicinity too so, yeah, that's why I only use them as salvagers or miners. I bought the repair fighters to see if, um, if it was possible to order our own repair fighters to repair our own ship. I think it should be possible, at this point my ship is not in need of repairs, so no way of knowing if they would repair it, if it needed, but next time I suffer some damage I'll try to remember if I'm in a good place to release my repair fighters and see if they work. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so you place you made your design on paper, Kitsuna. For what you want to build. I think uh, if your if your um, if your update was regarding angers for fighters, I can tell you a couple of things about it. So, first, um, you don't need to have a single block of anger to provide you anger space for the fighters. You can have, like I have, for example, on this ship, I have two small entrances for the fighters to enter and exit. And they go more or less up to here, in depth. And then, back here, I have a large cube made of anger. But... I actually think they are in contact with each other, because this here is also anger behind this armor, so it's connected to that one, it's glued to that one, although it's not the same block, and goes almost all the length of the ship to the inside, on each side. So it doesn't have to be a single block, and as long as you have a small entrance for the fighters to enter and exit, you can then have a hidden large anger inside your ship to provide more space for the fighters. The main concern, however, like I said earlier, is not having anything on the exit surface because that would impede the fighters' movement. Even placing this here is a risk because if you noticed, it's just very, very slightly over the edge, and it could be enough to not allow the fighters to leave. The best way to check, though, uh, uh, without having to experiment, is by clicking on the block. You actually have to choose the anger block from your building inventory, and then place it in the same position, as the one that you've placed on the ship. Somehow he's not letting me. Anyway, uh, you, you do this, you choose the anger, and it should provide you the trajectory for the fighter's movement. And if the trajectory is in white, you're good to go. If it's in red, fighters won't exit. So, seems like the building menu... is not behaving properly, or it is. I didn't chose the anger, I chose the engine, that's why it wasn't rotating. rotating. Yeah, so with the anger, if you do this, as you see, you have a white bar coming out of the block, which is the fighter's trajectory. If it's white, it means the fighters will be able to enter and exit, if it turns red, it means the fighters won't be able to go in and out. Like, for example... You can also click on the, the placed block, and it will provide you the same display. And as you can see, going up it's white, going down is red, so they can't exit through the lower entrance, because it's covered by armor, but they can enter through here. Um, if, by any chance, I had... Uh, let's say... the anger... 
just a little bit covered by something else. As you can see, the exit turns red, so the fighters won't be able to use that entrance. So just make sure the, the trajectory is unimpeded and you should be fine. As you can see, if I place it here, no problem, but if I move it here, it will catch the wing on the way and the fighters won't come out. So that's a good way of knowing if it's gonna work or not without actually having to save the design and buy some fighters and experiment with it. As long as you don't forget, like I did yesterday, to hire some pilots. So I wonder why these guys are completely stopped. So let's hmm I wonder if I'm gonna lose reputation for sending fighters to repair that ship or am I gonna win reputation? I don't know if I'm connected at this point. I am. But the repair fighters are not being able to repair absolutely anything. At least, doesn't look like it. Earl is not changing at all. So maybe that's it. Maybe what they mean that's what they mean when they say that repair fighters are not working. In fact, it actually looks like the hole is decreasing instead of increasing. Yeah, that's crazy. Let's call them back.
<laughs> oh god. Or maybe they are just taking damage over time for some reason. For lack of sufficient systems. But 72.6. Yeah, it's dropping. It's slowly dropping. They are taking damage over time. But the repair fighters did not help. You mean like the repair turrets that, that say, um, I don't know if I have one in here. Oh, okay, so fighters can be... So let's see these fighters. All repair. Hi, Sleepy Tor. How are you?
Okay. I really need to find... some faction. Where is your home sector? Duabahu Commonwealth Prime is here. down there, huh? Okay, why not? We can go in that direction. You're coming in, Sleepy Tor? Good. You should come in too, Kitsuna. Haha, <laughs> to make that drawing you have in a paper. To turn it to turn it into a ship. Yeah, the tick has been increased and the price too. We found a wormhole. A Starcraft Deutsch. Extreme Masters live at the moment, yeah. Haven't watched Starcraft in a while, actually. It's always fun, though. Jet Vova, I'm new, ha! <laughs> I'm new, says Speedy. Okay, we found the jump gate taking us closer to the center. That's good. Doesn't take us inside the center yet, but it's a step in the right direction. We still need to find the damn wormhole to enter the middle the middle regions. But this wormhole is gonna be very helpful. I don't even know if I'm gonna look for the other guys there.
Hey, come on! Oh, we already went through it. Okay. Uh, I'm glad it didn't throw me back. In that case. Uh, poor connection, probably. Okay, finally some green dots. Seems like this entire area was really depleted of anything. No green dots in this whole place, so probably no jump gates or habitable sectors. Which is strange, is a large area. Mm, there must be, but it's probably hidden. Either that... Or I was just lucky and didn't find rifts that some way or another are probably making habitation a little harder on this place. Because in here, there are a lot of them. So let's see right here, there's a good cluster in this area. Or we can try to find the gate network that most certainly exists around here by jumping to the closest green dot right there. There we go. We found the gate network. Let's see what's in this area. Absolutely nothing. It's just the gate network. We have two gates. Both are taking us to friendly territory. Good relations with the Galactic Guild of Uigi. <laughs> and... Again, I guess it's their territory. It's good to know that they're friendly, so let's see if we can do some trade on their grounds. First of all, let's see what's in there. We're gonna have to really scout out this entire zone to find good trades. So let's start by checking that sector.
salesman. What are you selling? Where is your home sector? Okay. Right here. Not far. Remember. Add note. Nothing here either, so let's jump over here. There's a good cluster of yellow dots around here. I should really start scouting them too, because if I want to find some abandoned mines, that's where they are. But since I still need money, let's focus on the trading first. And after the trading is done, we can then start looking for abandoned mines. Uh, okay, so finally we found the first stations belonging to this guild. Let's see what they have in this sector. Ammunition factory, gas collector, high capacity lens factory, that's interesting. Ammunition factory also interesting and resource depot. So let's see the trades, probably nothing, since it's the first sector with stations. Yeah, but we can already see a few of the items they are selling. Ammunition, helium and high capacity lenses are a high profitable item. If we can find someone to buy them. So... Let's visit a few more sectors around here. First... Yeah, 1810, that's good. This is the gas collector. I like the architecture of this faction. They actually make stations that resemble stations. And do very cool haulers. Although this is a more common design, but I really like these haulers. Some Zanian. We can also send fighters, mining fighters, made of trinium, to harvest the Zanian. Done. Let's call them back.
Okay. Uh, let's do a few more jumps to try and find better trade routes. Let's see what's in that sector. By the way, while it calculates the jump, let's just take a quick look around the sector to see if there is anything claimable. And now, man, I really need black. This is gets this gets on my nerve so much, so much, so much. Looking at this ship, looking like it's half done, really gets on my nerves. What's around here? So. Ooh, the Duabahu Commonwealth have sent some traders to visit these guys. Noble metal mine, let's see what's in this sector after all. Only mines, okay. Trade routes, nothing special. Let's jump over here <laughs> it's so nice to see people getting along Thank <laughs> you. 
fungus farm, potato farm, computer component factory, working trinium mine, someone passed through here and activated, gun factory and vehicle factory. These are Trang's highly profitable ones. Let's see, let's see, we just need people to buy them. Targeting cards, vehicles are empty, but targeting cards, they have a... Sh a shit ton of them so and displays they also have displays I think ah no it's empty anyway targeting cards 10,000 of them is a great profit at 0 0.5 volume and 9 9,000 credits each it's a great profit we just need to find where to sell it so Let's scout a little more. Let's jump over here to see what's up. And then we'll need to go back up there to see where this branch will go. Because more than likely this area also has several jump gates. So for now let's go south or east southeast actually east southeast a lot of containers the galactic guild of you yeah i don't want to ruin the reputation with these guys let's leave it alone a giant rock of Zanyan let's go through the gate this time although it costs money okay sleepy tour I let you go this time. <laughs> Ship is the Upshulwi or Upshuiwi. Upshuiwi. Upshuiwi is a good name. Upshuiwi from the guild Ovulugwi. Hmm. So what's in this sector? Solar power plant, plasma cell factory, resource depot, laser head factory, turret factory, noble metal mine. Wow. Come on, come on. Okay, 6 million of profit by taking some platinum from here to the computer component factory. I guess we're going to do it. Let's move right away. Six million profit is very good profit at this point. I'm gonna have to do several hauls, of course, because I only have one and a half million to invest. But it's exactly the kind of commodity that will allow me to quickly multiply my money up to bare minimum acceptable amounts. Which is to say some 10-15 million. So... Another jump. Let's see. Yeah, right there. It should have... 19,600 of them, I'll probably only be able to buy some a thousand or something, but second hold should go better. No! Uh, 
Okay, now where is the Platinum Factory? The Noble Metal Mine, right there. Let's buy some Platinum. I probably am gonna need to extend my cargo bay, obviously, otherwise I'll only be able to carry 160. Let's see if it's because of the price or size. One eighty five, it's the max. Probably because of size. So let's see if we can add a little bit more cargo bay just for these holes. Let's place it down here. Hey, Smarky. How are you? So, have you been playing the game? I haven't seen you today. But I haven't been online all day either. Okay. 2994. Seems like I can still afford it, so let's increase a little more the size. This is made of trinium, let's get a little more. Who's there? Who's there? Ah, okay. Well... You don't have to play, you only play if you want it, of course. But... You're always welcome, as you know. Set the cannons. Three, two, one, zero. Prepare those cannons again. Full power to cannons. You too. Goodbye. Oh, this guy. Eh. These shields are being mowed down rather quickly too. 500 Omnitron firepower. That's nothing special.
I'm sorry. You shouldn't have stayed behind my target. Okay. Oh, great. Let's see if it's worth salvaging any of this. Yeah, it is. When you start to get um, there's also a nice distribution of the weapons uh, across the galaxy, so as you progress towards the center, you tend to find new types of weapons. So at first, you'll may you, when you're in the Iron Territory, mostly you'll begin finding uh, chain guns and bolters and cannons at best mostly kinetic weapons and then a little later when you start entering titanium and neonite you start finding plasma weapons then when you get to trinium zanion you start finding rail guns and these elect electric weapons the tesla weapons so yeah there's some progress in that too and this area the so it, it, in some in some aspects you'll get to find when you, f you when you get into large battles uh, more or less mid the way towards the center like where I am now maybe even a little less in this area more or less all around the center whenever you get into big battles you'll have a tendency to find uh, more um, more enemies equipped with Tesla weapons, so battles become really chaotic. You start seeing a lot of lightning everywhere, floating around, uh, and they are great to deplete shields. I, I, I really like cannons a lot because of the range. Um, and I also like fast paced weapons. But. Well, basically, I think if I could equip my ship entirely of. Or fast paced, fast firing rate plasma weapons and cannons, I would be happy. Or instead of the plasma weapons, some laser turrets. The only reason I really don't use laser turrets more is because they generally have very short ranges yeah it's true their damage is usually very good because you can see the the laser the entire time so it's very easy to aim and to keep the damage output constant but at the same time the range is a lot shorter so Lasers, in general, tend to stay below the 4 kilometers. 
and I usually like to have most of my weapons at least at 5. I love the cannons because they allowed me allow me to start firing at 8 kilometers to 10 kilometers of distance. And missiles also guided missiles are also great. Although I haven't found any this time, at least until now. So... Let's buy the Platinum. Okay. I don't have enough money to buy any more, so maybe 50 more. Okay, let's sell it over here. Yeah. Well, these trade upgrades are what allows you to see this board with detected trade routes, items that you can buy from stations, and items that you can sell to stations. And in this case, my trade system allows me to see up to six sectors of distance. So the trade routes it detects can go to that far. Uh, but without a trading module, you would not have access to this board at all. That icon would not be there. So yeah, the trading module is very, very useful. You can do trading without it, but it takes a lot more time and requires a lot more work from your part because you'll have to do it all manually. You'll have to go to station from station to station, checking prices until you find some high-paying commodity, and then you have to go around trying to find a good place to sell it. So it takes a while longer, but once you have a trade module for the first time, you start understanding a little better how the trade routes work, and even when you don't have them, you start having a better grasp where to look for buyers and sellers. So, usually you will be able to find trade routes inside a single faction. Um, and profitable ones. So, and normally each faction also has at least one of every a major station, so at least one military outpost, at least one uh, equipment depot, at least one research station, and so on, so on. They, they don't all have every single station, of course, but they tend to be spread out pretty evenly. Do you guys need help to deal with that pirate?
Well, I don't think so. Let's sell our load first. Ah, eh, you have it. He's almost out of shields. I like this station. It looks cool. Those those grids are a pain to do. It it really has to be procedurally generated. A player to do this would take forever. Well, it wouldn't take forever because you can actually copy past, but it would still be some work. These, these guys are selling targeting cards. Man, I need to find a buyer for these targeting cards. Let's sell the platinum. Three, seven. Four, four. So I invested one million seven hundred to get two million seven hundred. So one million profit with this hole. Let's get more. Now that we can invest more money, let's go back to the platinum mine. Mmm, pirates brought reinforcements, huh? Let's give these guys a hand. You can always you can already make your own stations. Uh, fact, I mean not stations, factories and and mines. Uh, so stations should not be that difficult to implement in the future. Um, although it might require some balancing to be integrated in the game economy. But if you could at least make um, resource depots would be great. Come on! You really want to defeat that pirate by throwing those nasty little lightnings? He's laughing at you. He has no shields, but he's laughing at you. Those things are great against shields, but terrible against all. That's why I love my cannons. Sink it. Reload. Full power to cannons. Fire. Man, that's a crazy amount of plasma. No, it's a crazy amount of dumb missiles. Wow! How many launchers did, does this guy have? 
that has to be a crazy amount of dumb, dumb fire missiles launchers. So, because they are not guided, so... Solar Dark Goldenrod. That's uh, an interesting name. My Solar Goldenrod ship. I'm gonna paint my ship with Starlight Goldenrod. This station is also cool. It's a destroyer. Completely. What the hell happened here? A giant fleet. Completely smashed in the middle of these asteroids. A cruiser. A destroyer. Somehow the destroyer is three times the size of the cruiser. But, yeah. I guess this faction likes their big destroyers. What is that? Salesman. What are you selling? Nothing. I'm not gonna steal you. So, okay, let's jump to get more platinum. Hopefully, when we return, these guys will have moved a little bit. Let's get more platinum. Right there. Break, break, break. I forgot I have a massive cargo bay. Man. Slowly, Tigers. Slowly. Let's buy some platinum. 6139, you say? Okay. I still have 185, so. 185,000. Let's get more. Yeah, not enough space in the cargo bay. So... I'm not gonna do it now. Next hole, I'll increase the size of the cargo bay a little bit. To be able to carry more. For now, let's go sell this, this cargo right there. To make this time probably 
Uh, one million eight hundred profit, perhaps. No, probably more. Uh, two million. Two million profit, I say. Probably not because the price has varied lower. So, yeah, I'll stick with one million eight hundred thousand profit with this hole. Let's see if my calculations are right. So, I invested... 2,200,000. And now, I'm gonna sell it for... a grand total of... 2,200,000, so I say 4 millions to do the 1,800,000 profit I was saying. sell 4 million 200 okay I missed by a little bit it was 2 million profit so missed it for 200,000 let's see how many more do they need so we don't buy too much they are still willing to buy another 15,000 or let's say 14,000 and 69 so let's see if we can make one last hole we won't be able to do this in one hole we'll need to do two holes to finish the whole the whole load yeah I got some premium neonite and titanium it seems like uh, not only the price of the refurbished mines has increased exponentially but the outcome was also lowered to half so instead of a thousand every every hour it will give you or every 30 minutes or so it will give you 500 so it's still a good investment but it will force you to these changes will force you to wait a bit longer and wait out uh, the price of the station versus what you'll get from it so while earlier it was probably worthwhile to grab in your first two millions in your bank account and spend one million in refurbishing a mine now uh, it may not be so worthy right away so if you only have two million and the mine costs two million and then it's just going to give you 500 every every hour it's worth it in terms of what you'll get from it but it will slow you down quite a lot because for the next few hours you'll have you'll be again at zero money and zero resources for a while yet so yeah I think it brings some changes at least it will force people to wait a bit longer until they have a lot more money before they start simply refurbishing every mine they see which is what a lot of people was doing earlier 
uh, mostly because people who play this game for a long time or who have been playing for uh, some time now since the game came out uh, already know how to make money in the game rather quickly and when you start having 20, 30, 40, 50 millions in your bank account it what's one more million or one less million you'll buy all the refurbished mines you see however if those mines are instead um, costing not one million but they are costing 10 millions or 15 millions well then your 50 millions may not seem so much if you go around refurbishing everything you see I guess the server for some reason drop me out <laughs> okay. So... Okay, we need to sell it again because the sale was not finished. I still have it all in my cargo. Let's go then. We still have to jump again. No, we are already at the destination, so we just need to actually sell it to those guys. For 2 million profit. Okay, we're starting to pile money again. I depleted my bank account completely this morning to refurbish a couple of mines. So... Yeah, because we just logged on, we need to travel again to see the trades. Let's go back over there, where where the platinum mine is.
Yeah. Just for a second, but I'm here. Just finishing this hole. And then we'll continue. Okay, so now we're gonna take this last hole of platinum to there, the computer component factory. The sector is getting invaded, the music just changed. It's the best indicator you got to when hostiles show up. The, mu the music immediately changes. So, let's just sell this platinum. That should get us to, hopefully, uh, 9000, so... I'd say... 8 million? Nah, maybe not that much. Maybe 7. Seven millions. Okay. Now, um, seven millions is not that much, considering I want to find a trinium, a Zanian mine, and a Zanian mine is probably some ten millions to reactivate. So. That means going back to zero again, so I should really do with some more trading. Um, let's see, we still have several sectors we have not visited from this faction. Uh, we haven't found a research station belonging to them, so let's see if we can find one together with an equipment depot that we also haven't seen yet in their sectors. So yeah, let's check this green dot and then from here we'll jump over there to see what's over there and then we'll decide if we go here or to check these dots in this sector. This is the home world for these guys, so that's probably where we are going to find the military outpost at least and possibly a shipyard. So let's take a look around. First, I really shouldn't erase this thing if I want to do more trading, but those guys really need some help.
Nice. So... If you pay attention when the game is loading, uh, often it provides some useful tips. And one of those tips is that to recover uh, turrets, weapon turrets, from enemy ships, you should fire at the turrets directly. Um, usually, trying to shoot the block where they are set on makes it random. The turret can drop and show up or not. But generally, if you manage to actually shoot the turret, she has a much higher chance to actually drop for you to pick up. Now it seems like they destroyed a hauler, but I'm not going to pick up this cargo because it's stolen and these guys would not like it. Um, the mission Easy Delivery has vanished from my journal despite the fact that I still have the suspicious goods. So I don't know if I should go to the to the delivery location or not. I actually have it saved, I think, in here. That's where I've been told to take it. But this has happened to me before, and what I what happened the other the other time is that by not having the mission on my journal when getting to the sector to deliver the suspicious cargo there wouldn't be anyone there to receive it so I think I need to actually restart the quest and go find a smuggler again uh, but then that means I should probably dump this cargo to avoid getting fined and ruining my reputation all the time. So...
<laughs> DVs is on call. Teleporting players to each other. <laughs> okay, we have a mine. Yeah, belonging. Someone already sold it. Those guys. Um, and if they sold that one, they probably sold any other that might be around. So. Galactic brightness. Let's travel over here. see where they are. Ooh. They are in the outskirts of the galaxy. That's probably uh, titanium territory. Maybe finding already some little pieces of neonite. And habitat. Habitat. <laughs> Abhorrent faction is usually impossible to turn. They are really, really
Hmm. These guys buy luxury food at 14,000 per unit. Let's visit the Rome world. Okay, now that we found an equipment station, let's see what we can buy from here. Um, actually, before that, let's see the trades. So, processors, we can make a million. We can make, can make nine million with... No, we cannot. Uh, where? They don't have Hanny, do they? I don't think they have any more. Didn't I take it all? I think I did. But they are willing to buy 13,000. Okay. We can go there to check. But first... I'm trying to remember if I left anything there or not.
No research. No research. But we need to check these places near the own world because there's probably gates over there, so some trading probably waiting to be done. So that's what I'm going to do. Jump over there. This might be a good location for setting up a base. This is not a bad place either, although it's a little bit further away from the center. But it does have a sector that is completely empty and it has a single gate connecting to a friendly faction. So it might be a good sector to make a production chain with three or four factories, since it's an empty sector and it won't provide too much overload on the server, hopefully. But let's explore a little better this area first. Uh, with a little luck, we'll find a good spot right here too, and we won't even have to go back there. Um, let's jump. And... Okay. Just for curiosity... Wow! 295 per unit. That means that 50k will cost... 20 million. Ha! So... Let's see. We have computer component factory, resource depot, coal mine, wheat farm, and these guys also want platinum, almost certainly. But at the very least, they want processors, so. It looks like. That sector where we were, it's the prime place to go get profitable items. So let's explore a little more around here. Uh, let's check. Over here. Okay, we got a shipyard and doesn't seem to be anything else, just a, a garden of Zanion. Yeah, it's just a garden of Zanion, but it does have a shipyard, which means it would be very easy to build stations in here. Um, the only problem is... With an asteroid field in the area. It can become very demanding for the server very quickly. So I better not build anything here. Uh, let's check this sector. Let's see if these two connect.
My mouth is dry. Okay. Uh, we can check the map. All right, it connected. It's got a strange formation. It seems like there's another gate in here along the way. And a ton of mines. Gold, silicium, neon, and oxygen. Let's check this sector or Actually, let's go here. Okay, and what's that? What a strange cargo hauler. How the hell does that thing navigate? Stashes? I think they are. Working cranium mine. Someone already claimed it. Um, what else? Yeah, I've been here. Uh, of course I have. Uh, let's see, so... Gold, neon and oxygen. So it seems like... Indeed, there are... There is no platinum. This point, let's see. That's a destroyer, that's a fungus farm, this is a vehicle factory, this is a computer component factory. These guys would still buy... Platinum, if there was some, but doesn't seem to be any in the area. <coughs> so, this is a gun factory. Um, and Let's get these processors right there. It's a small profit, but it's profit for someone who has seven millions. A million is profit. So, 
let's buy these processors. They only have two thousand and eighty, two hundred and eighty. Uh, yeah, you're gonna be able to double your money, but why aren't they producing more? What do they need to produce more? Hmm, probably semiconductors are missing. So finding semiconductors. would make the factory produce more processors and displays. Targeting cards... I really need to find... Uh, I'm being stupid. I should be really exploring this thoroughly to find some place to sell targeting cards because there has to be a place around here somewhere. Um, I'm gonna buy these processors. And gonna travel. Let's take a peek here. Or here. <coughs> That's a little bit far, but we can go there. First, let's jump over here. Ooh, a wormhole. Unfortunately, it drives me outwards, so But for people coming in, it might be useful, if you're coming from this side. So, what else? These are all... ...large objects. In here there's something. But that's yellow. Let's jump here. And then here to deliver the processors and And then here. So let's go. Guys, I'm gonna mute the the mic for the, the mic for a second. I'm right here, but I'm gonna have it muted for uh, a little bit longer than usual. Or better yet, I'm gonna be speaking a little less than usual, because I'm gonna be eating and I don't want to have you hearing while I'm chewing, so I'll be muting this thing for a little bit, but I'm right here. If need be, I can still talk. It's just that I'll be muting while I'm chewing.
Okay, let's jump to that sector to to check what's there. This is a massive asteroid field. Look at this crap. I mean, it's just massive. So many of them. Have you guys seen this? Wow!
think I'm gonna take the opportunity to get some Xenian. Yeah, they do it by themselves, and they can even, you can even help yourself, of course, you can be mining and having their help to sink down these large asteroids, but you can also just leave them working by themselves, uh, but you need to, to be nearby, they only work in close proximity. No, you don't have to fire the mining the mining turrets. You can just leave them alone. Uh, but you need to be keeping an eye on them because they do what you order them to do. So basically, you need to aim at an asteroid, choose it, and then order here on the left side of the screen order them to mine it and they will only keep going while the asteroid has enough integrity to stay chosen as your target if it disintegrates you will lose lock and they will stop mining so you need to keep an eye so that when the block breaks down to a small size and you lose the lock so that you order them again so that they resume mining so you still need to keep an eye on them but it allows for a little more freedom like now I'm heating and they are working which is good Well, yes, to be honest, Kitsuna, that's what most people use um, carriers and fighters for. I don't think anyone actually uses them for combat. Sorry, mostly because, like I explained earlier, they are very expensive and very fragile, so it's not it's not cost-effective to use them for combat 
So, but you'll notice that most people who actually play the game and get to a point of building big ships, most people who have big ships have big hangars full of salvagers and mining, fi mining fighters. Because they are actually faster with two with a couple of squads of minor f mining fighters. Each squad has twelve of them. So with a couple of squads you can mine these asteroids a lot faster than you would ever do by yourself, even if you filled your ship with turrets just for mining. Uh, of course, the quality of the ship, the quality of the fighter also matters. Let's call them back, because they are getting too far away. And we have hostiles. I actually think they already went too far. So, that's why you need to keep an eye on them, because if you don't, when they finish what, what you told them to do, they will wander off uh, to do their own thing. Usually that means mining by themselves, but at the strangest locations you can imagine. So you should keep an eye on them and order them to return as soon as they stop mining well it is it is efficient um, like I was saying it depends on the quality of the fighters you buy uh, that's what will influence how efficient it is just like the turrets each one of these little fighters is like a mobile turret by itself and the better the fighter you buy, uh, the better the efficiency of the old process. Um, still, I usually tend to carry a couple of squads of each. So, a couple of squads of salvagers and a couple of squads of miners. And that's it. I don't carry any other type of fighters. That's mostly because at this point, like I said, fighters are still a little fragile for what they cost. So. Nobody is really interested in throwing money away. Which is basically what you end up doing with combat fighters. Um, however, NPCs close to the center use fighters for combat really effectively. And they are a pain to defend against, because they are very small, very hard to aim at. Uh, you can set your turrets to... You can set a, a, a group with fast-firing turrets, like... Um, like machine guns, or bolters. And from here, you can click on the group, and you can tell it to auto-fire. And that will make those turrets from that group work as anti-aircraft turrets. So they will fire in every direction, trying to intercept the little fighters. The problem is that... Uh, well, like so many other things in this game, the game is still in early access, so there's still some balancing to be done. And at this point, turrets still have a tendency to spread out too much, uh, each trying to find its own target, and they tend to be very ineffective 
because they don't focus their fire as a normal as a player would normally would so that makes it a pain to fight against them but usually with um, with laser turrets you can pin down fighters uh, thing is NPCs don't mind to lose half of their fighters to attack you and they can do quite quite a lot of damage that way but for you to use your fighters and attack the same way it's not nearly cost efficient to lose half your fighters each time uh, you'll go bankrupt in, in, <laughs> in a couple of seconds so um, yeah for the time being Salvagers and miners. That's all. Yeah, yeah. That's all. It's all that comes with it. Uh, when you lose a fighter, you lose the pilot, and it's a lot of money. It's the cost of the fighter. Is the cost of the pilot. Uh, it's having to go looking for an equipment dock with fighters to replace the ones you lost. It's just it's just not not worth it in my opinion. I'd rather keep my fighters uh, for after the battle is done. And then, after the battle is done... When it's all over... Like now... That's when we can finally... Release our fighters. And since the salvagers have some work to do... And if you notice, the salvagers actually collect uh, the resources floating around. While you're there, let's send the miners to work too. So, they managed to go all the way to the end because the lock remained the entire time. But more often than not, this will not happen. So, let's send them to that wreck. And the miners Let's send them to mine that.
So yeah, basically, if you have, uh, uh, or if you work for it, it's not that hard to to make uh, a hangar big enough on your ship to hold four or six squads of great fighters, of great quality fighters, just for this, just for mining and salvaging. And as you can see, uh, three squads means 36 fighters. And 36 fighters of good good quality salvaging a wreck will get done with it in a few seconds. And same for miners. My my salvagers went loose. They probably went somewhere looking for more wrecks. There they are. And my miners are going crazy and are going too far away. I better call them back because soon some hostiles will show up. And then they won't have enough time to return. Those fighters were already going halfway to the center of the galaxy without me. So... Let's explore a little more to find more trades.
guess there are 8 millions to be made in profit by selling gold. We'll be doubling our money, so buying at 332, selling at 671. Let's do it. So, let's do this trade that just popped up with gold. to be bought at 331 and sold at 671. Basically, will allow us to double our money. They are selling 25,000 and there's a buyer for 24,000. Profit 8 millions. So, let's go for it. Ah, that's too fast. Get out of there. Get out of there. Man. Why the hell did the ship gain so much speed? I don't get it. It seems that we can only fit 10,400. Probably because that's all we can afford, let's see. No, we can actually afford more, so... Let's buy a little more. Ah, I don't have enough space in the cargo bay. But that's not a good enough reason. If it's just the cargo bay... Let's add more cargo bay. Okay, and now Okay, I guess we invested 5 millions in gold And processors. That's right. I haven't sold the processors yet. Stupid me. 
let's see if I remember where they where they are to be sold. I think I do. Well, for now, let's uh, jump. over there and then we'll have to return here to sell the processors but for now let's sell the gold So let's make the second hole um, to deplete this gold run. Um, they still, they are still buying nine thousand five hundred and thirty-three, if I'm not mistaken. I already sold the rest, so. 
let's get the rest of the gold these guys have and take it back to the computer factory computer mainframe factory noble metal mine let's buy some gold you have 10,000 but I don't want 10,000 they only want to buy 9,533 if I'm not mistaken I think I'm not mistaken so actually 400 yeah it should be right so let's go back here to sell the gold we invested four and a half millions And we are gonna sell it for probably nine millions. Maybe slightly less. We still need to find where to sell the processors because those processors alone should be some two million profit. It's just 280, but it's a valuable commodity. It's just a pain, a, a, a shame that they don't have any more of these because that would that would help to rack up larger profits a little bit faster. And let's sell nine five three three. Okay, sold. Yeah, profit went down because the price in here, uh, they started paying less on this final hole and the factory was also charging more. The reason is the factory was almost depleted and these guys already had plenty, so prices tended to balance out each other, so the profit margin dwindles. That's why, as a general rule of thumb, you should try to split your trade holes into as few travels as possible. So ideally, you should take all the, the, the commodities for that uh, single trade in a single hole. Uh, of course, that's not always possible, because sometimes you're talking about items that are very big and take too much space or sometimes because they are very expensive and it's impossible to buy all of them in a single hole but you should always try because it's the it's it's the only way you can be sure that you'll get the price you saw uh initially 
in in the entire trade. If you split it, uh, pr uh, prices can change and your profit margin it's likely to diminish. Um, as for the processors. I want to go here first and then we can go here to sell the processors. Uh, yeah, that's it. After that, we'll go back up. gonna buy servos <coughs> not to sell but to carry with me mostly because they are a prime ingredient if I ever decide to build my own turrets And lead, probably, too. Uh, other than that, we can jump over here to check this question mark. But I'd rather go up first and sell the processors. Someone already activated that Trinium mine. But I don't need Trinium mines. I need Xenian ones. So let's see if we can find some. Okay, let's jump here to the home world first. Thirteen seconds to go.
so we found a buyer for the processors. We can check the trading overview. Or not. Okay, so um, although the trade routes say nothing about processors, the reason they don't is because there isn't actually a trade route at this point, because I bought all the process all the processors that were for sale, and so. Now the AI can't find anywhere to buy processors, so they can't form an actual trade route. But I know I bought processors because there was a trade route, so let's check where to sell processors. And there we are. Processors, processors, in the trading post or the repair dock. The trading post is paying a little bit more, 40% profit against 34% profit from the repair dock. So let's go to the trading post.
so let's sell these processors finally over here to Haiti for two and a half millions we're back at 13,000 13 million and now the module completely vanished What a strange destroyer is that? You call that a destroyer? Really? Well, not that I can talk much. Let's see this sector. And then I'll start checking all the green dots in this area these two and some of these yellow blips to see if we can find some more money military outpost Let's buy from the equipment dock. Let's see what do they have of fighters. Mining fighters. Legendary mining fighters. Uh, made of Zanian, no better. So, salvaging, mining. Exceptional, exceptional, exceptional. But at 800,000 credits, it's painful, it's painful. That's five million or four million, perhaps. Four millions. 
That's four millions in fighters. Not enough space in the anger. For real? Let's see the anger. So, mining fighter, mining fighter, salvager, salvager. That means this squad is not needed. And... Let's see, more equipments. Turrets. Triple cannon. Lightning plasma, nope. No need. And upgrades. Robotic crew, no thank you. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to the bathroom, just give me a second. I'll be right back.
Thank you, Kitsuna. I won't forget to unmute it. I had my finger over the button. I just hadn't done it yet. Because I was still hitting a little piece of chocolate. And... Drinking some water. And smoking a cigar. I'm a man of many vices. Okay. So... Was also reading the conversation on the chat. An interesting conversation about the fighters. And they're right. Um, somehow, the AI for the fighters is a lot better than the AI that uh, rules uh, the ships you build. So you can place a captain on your ship and the AI will take charge and control the ship. But it never behaves as good as the fighters. Even if you make a ship just as small as the fighters you see and give them a mining turret and order them to go mine, they will never behave and mine as good as a fight, as a fighter, a salvaging fighter or a mining fighter that you bought on a station. It seems to have a slight difference on the AI behavior, but it's enough for for it to be noticeable. Now, up here, let's see what's there. Should be ready to go. Schmacke left. I didn't even notice that he had got that he had come in. Schmacke, are you leaving for good? Yeah, it's always chocolate's fault. It is. In my case, it's it's often the chocolate's fault. Is there many players when you join a public server? Well, uh. Depends on the server, but most servers at this point, because the game is still in early access and it's still not uh, completely streamlined, uh, there's still some instability, and so most servers are limited to 24, 30, uh, 50 people at best, I think. I think there's a couple of them with 100 people, but they never have 100 people. Not even near that. Uh, mostly, a good server will have around 20 people online. Uh, that's a good number. And yes, you can play with other people. You can. There, there's actually several people on this server that are working together somewhere, on some sector, building some stations and stuff. Um, I know that because I've I've already watched them talking on the chat. Uh, but yeah, you can do that. Uh, and there's already several ser servers set up. You just need to to try and find one that's good for you, one that you like and enjoy, and stick with it to build your community. Um, and Kitsuna, I don't know. We've talked about that also among us. I don't know if if if, if it will ever be possible to build jump gates. I kind of doubt it, but it would actually be interesting if you could. Although I don't see that as uh, something that would be easily implemented because the universe, the galaxy, is procedurally generated and the way the gates connect seems to be predetermined 
from the get go. So I don't I, I don't see how how easy it would be to implement a gate and make it connect to the existing grid of jump gates and wormholes. But you never know. Uh, from from what I read uh, on Kushi's interview, I think it was um, one of the things he was talking about was exactly the fact that he's just one person and there's not he's got help of a couple more people here and there, but it's mostly all just him and. He talked about a few of those things, like being able, players being able to build some of uh, some more advanced structures. He didn't refer specifically to gates, um, and also later even the possibility of being able to land on planets. Uh, and he said that, well, uh, those things. Considering he's just one person, those are things that. Are, are never going to be uh, uh, in the vanilla game at launch date, but both in the in the mod community, with the game being so open-ended, it can show up. But he also said that it would be a possibility later on, depending on the reception that the game would have, uh, to maybe uh, try to implement stuff like that in DLCs or 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 even. Uh, a sequel, I don't know. I think everything is possible because the game has indeed a lot of potential and although it's very it's very simple to play uh, doesn't have a lot of key, a, a lot of uh, keyboard keys to, to, to memorize and such, it's not. It's just plain old <coughs> WSAD space and mouse and little more really i for inventory p for ship and that's it nothing else uh, numbers for groups the usual as any game doesn't even have all those crazy shortcuts like usually the x games have and it's got a simple but very effective building menu so the game's got everything to 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 lay down uh, the the base canvas for further development and further addition of a lot more mechanics and little things uh, but that's a, that's about it since he's just one person he'll probably is going to have to rely a lot on the modding community and will probably be forced to hang on and see step by step how the reception is and what is um, acceptable for him in, ter in terms of timeline also to try to add. Um, but I have good expectations for this, I can tell you that. <laughs> I actually like drift fighting a lot, but this ship is not a great drifter, mostly because of the new blocks, the, the gyro array and the inertia dampener, they make this, the, the ship drift a lot less. There's a turret factory. So just to remind me, because I never know, I never, I never can say, uh, to build the turret. Let's say I'd want to build a cannon turret with uh, exceptional quality, like this, and let's increase the number of parts to increase its strength, so as, as powerful as possible. It would cost 17,000 credits per unit to manufacture. I would have to bring all these items 
12 warhead, 7 high pressure tube, 7 explosive charge, 10 steel, 6 wire for a single turret and it would give me this so thing is if you compare the stats you'll find out that custom made weapons like these are way more effective and efficient than anything you can find out there so it pays up to go through the trouble of finding these items and make them not to equip them as this, as yellow, but the idea is to make these, make, I don't know, uh, 20 of these, so you can see the amount of materials you'd need, make 20 of these and then take them to the research and do research 5x5 five five of them to get um, orange weapons, custom, war custom orange weapons, and And uh, that way you would get custom weapons a lot more powerful than anything anyone can find in-game as loot. As for... Mm, no, not yet. Uh, I don't think you, there's even a way to to change um, to change uh, flight assist. Uh, it's a fixed thing, uh, unlike Elite Dangerous, where you can deactivate a flight assist to rotate. But you don't need that that here because that's basically part of the way you fly in this game. You don't have a way to break or to apply reverse thrust to increase your your deceleration radio so basically you can always drift in one direction turn your ship around and you can use the control key to fix your camera and rotate the perspective without rotating the heading of the ship so that allows you to travel in one direction while being turned in the opposite way to be able to fire for example so you don't really need a flight assist disabled. As for the ship, that's the ship you had made, right? Well, I like that nose better than than what it was before. If it was mine, I can tell you that on the second step of that nose the upper step, the middle upper step of that nose, I would probably place um, a block of glass to to give the notion of a bridge of some sort. But that is just me. Either way, uh, as great as it is, I like this nose better than than how it was before. Uh, the green items in the distance depends on what items you are talking about. If you're talking about these, these are ships and stations belonging to a friendly faction of NPCs. So these are all NPCs. Other players are usually represented by the same grid around them, but the color will be something like closer to this pink arrow you have pointing at my ship. in the power management what power management
I don't see no power management. I don't see that option. Oh, okay. <coughs> yeah, well, if now you can change these things, uh, yeah, that's interesting. But basically, you can turn on and off the energy for the gyros for example or the life support or the systems or the engine the shields the thrusters the turrets the integrity field anger and hyperspace engine and yeah i get what you're saying you have here flight assist and you can enable disable but what difference does that actually make to your flight It seems like the difference, it's basically just the ship applying deceleration or not. That's basically the only thing I notice. But shouldn't that be... Well, no, it's different, you're right. <coughs> but, yeah. From what I can see, it seems like disabling flight assist will disable deceleration altogether while disabling the gyros will only disable the gyros uh, basically making the ship rotate slower um, yes for those of us who like to drift fight it could make sense to have like you say um, a way to turn flight assist on and off with a key shortcut uh, and since they just added that it might be that something like that comes on a future update because it would make sense uh, to be able to map all of these to some keys.
Well, from what I just tried, that's what it seems. It seems like, for example, let me fly full speed ahead using afterburner. Top speed should be, I don't know, 5600. It shouldn't get there. 3300 top speed. And flight assist is activated, so. Took about 25 seconds to get to zero. If I turn it off and push the speed to max, It takes a lot longer to stop. Um, it actually slows down at more or less the same rate for the initial part of the deceleration, but once it gets to 500 meters per second, with flight assist you stop in about 10 seconds. Without it, you don't. You just keep going. I'm still going. So that's what I noticed with flight assist. So yeah, it should allow you to drift a little more if you like drift fighting. And it would actually be useful for this ship if I could disable it on the fly. Um, because having to open this menu to turn it on and off each time, it's not exactly... intuitive, so to speak. Um, the gyros will basically... the impact that disabling the gyros has, it will be directly dependent on how reliant your ship is on them. So, if you have a lot of thrusters and then just a few gyros, it might not make a big difference. But if you rely mostly on gyros to do the rotational speed, then turning it off should probably turn your ship into a rock. Um, yeah. Now, we can always see the stats. Yaw 0 0.5, pitch 0 0.67, roll 0 0.74. By turning on the gyros, shouldn't, di shouldn't that go up? or that doesn't change despite the gyros being on and off. It should change, right? Your pitch and roll. Are not gyros supposed to... Look, energy stops being used, so yeah, so your pitch and roll should, al should also fall. I think. Uh, 
I don't think it disables them completely because the ship actually slows down but we can see uh, let's see uh, disabling flight assist and then forward thrust and now let's try yeah it disables the forward thrust that's exactly what it does um but i'm more confused about the gyros let me just let's species goods let's dump this cargo no not the servos well now we have to wait 45 seconds to be able to recover them again Oh, look, it's not 45 seconds anymore. Seems to be a lot less now. But still, I want to dump the suspicious goods. Um, the stats, I believe, are where they are supposed to be. They are not as good as they are supposed to, but that's because I'm carrying a crazy block on my ass. Uh, without it, it should be a lot better, I think. What doesn't make sense is that deactivating the gyros makes no effect on your pitch and roll. Even because... This is a good roll ratio. This is not a good roll ratio. So it should not be the same. They are give me, giving me the stats for the ship with all the systems working. When in fact they are not. Uh, and you can see that on the energy consumed. So yeah, they still need to check a few things in this. Um, but that's expected, so it was just implemented, so we need to give it time to be balanced and streamlined. Um, crystal farm, mineral extractor, solar power plant. Kitsuna, how about that chip? Have you started building that chip yet? <laughs> I want to see that chip. Well, uh, let's jump over here to check what's in this sector. That's shiny. I want, I need money because I need Zanyan because I need to make a ship. Sorry.
What is that? Are these wrecks? Is this a salvage yard? It is. What's in here? It's just a scrapyard? Yeah, and the working Zanian mine that someone already activated. We have a rift. Where is the station? Scrapyard. Um, salvaging for five minutes. Where are the wrecks? That's a good one. Oh, the connection. Oh, the connection. I'm seeing a generator here, or a hyperdrive, I think it's a hyperdrive. Aha! Nice. So let's see the other side. Get those engines. And...
I guess we're good for now. So let's go to the next. Thirty seconds. Okay, so let's call the fighters back. <coughs> And Let's see these trades. Nothing special. 900,000 of profit with energy cells if we want to go through the trouble. But buying for 24 to sell for 92 seems a little crazy for me to do 1 million profit with those with those amounts. I imagine that I should probably have to do some 20 holes to get to a million profit. Um, okay, a number of yellow blips. Let's go check this green one. There's still another one in there. We haven't found a research station on this faction yet. So, who knows, with a little luck. Because I need a lot more Zanian. A lot more. Just for beginning of conversation, I need 3 million Zanian. So, that's just to start the conversation. And then, 1.5 million Trinian would also help. And that's just to start the conversation about building a proper ship. What is this? What's that tumor? Well, that tumor is a cargo bay <laughs> to, that I slapped on the ass of my ship just so that I wouldn't have to do three or four holes to make some money on a trade. This way I slapped this thing here and I was able to take everything I had in a single hole. So a couple of Zanian mines that someone already activated. Seems like They've all been activated already. Some people have been racing for them, so it's expected. Maybe now that they are a little more expensive, people will stop hoarding these mines. Um, okay, so working mine, working mine, working mine, working mine. Four Zanian mines all taken. Let's jump to here. And now the only reason I haven't taken this tumor from my ass is because I'm still trying to find some trades and I'm not gonna take it out just to have to place it back again 
in 15 minutes or so. So, for now, I'm flying with a giant gray box on my ass. Um, yeah, I don't even want to think more about these mines. Let's just jump, jump, jump! Get those things out of my sight. Yes, indeed I did. You know, Samurai, it took me three hours to figure out what the problem was. And after tearing my ship apart for three times and reworking the angers a million different ways, I found out that I was missing pilots. So, don't tell me anything, I don't want to hear it, just never mind, forget it ever happened. So, yeah, lol, a very big lol indeed. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, noob mistake, it, it's not so much that it's, yeah, it's a noob mistake because noobs when you first start, sometimes you, you don't know that you actually need pilots for the fighters to function. But it's not even that, I knew that, that, that the fighters needed pilots to function. It's just that, well, it never even crossed my mind to check, because, man, I hired so many pi pilots in this game that I completely forgot that we had made a wipe and it was a new ship and I had no crew, so no pilots. So yeah, I spent three hours reworking my ship, trying to figure out what the hell was wrong with it, and turns out there was nothing wrong with it. I just didn't have pilots to fly the fighters outside the hangar. Where is your home sector? Yes, and... And... Um, you're right. It places a warning for everything, but I don't think it places a warning for pilots. Uh, because they are not essential for the working of your ship. Your ship works perfectly well without them. It's just that if you try to make the fighters come out and you give the order, uh, nothing happens. <laughs> and, and instead of the icon displaying uh, after the order is given like this, it simply doesn't show anything and the fighters don't move. So... But yeah, it could be easily fixed with a basic icon displaying to tell you that pilots are missing. Honestly, I, I reworked the ship for three hours and then I gave up. I simply got to the point when I said, well, they are glitched. That's the only explanation. They are glitched. This is glitched. Something with the mod pack or... I don't know. It's glitched. I don't care. And I gave up. So, five minutes later, I dock on a station. I look at the crew. And... Bling! Oh, pilots. What the hell? Yeah. Ninety-seven thousand Zanyan. I'm tempted to buy it. The problem is 
97 Zanyan at 351 credits per unit should be something like... I don't know... Uh, 50 million credits? So, buying them... Buying Zanyan is not really an alternative at this point. Um, mm, I really need a mine. And I even went to the point... I even went to the point of completely loading a different ship that I knew for a fact was functional. And I did that and fighters were still not coming out. That's when I thought, oh, okay, this is glitch. It's got a big glitch, so I don't even want to know anymore. Well, yeah, the ship was fu was functional, but the fighters were still not coming out because there were no pilots. Yeah, probably more. Uh, 97,000 at 351 per unit. If it was at 100 per unit, it would be... Ninety-seven, nine million. It's a it's a train load train load of money. Um, You're right, it's something like 35, maybe 34 million credits, but at that price, it really forces you to think if you really want to spend money buying or if it's not preferable to mine it yourself. Uh, and that's the point when I start to think that it might pay up to make a larger hangar to hold two or three crews of mining fighters to be able to mine Zanyan a little faster. Because I'm starting to think that I'm not going to find a Zanyan refurbished mine easily. So... Let's see. Repair dock and shipyard. An asteroid that has been claimed and sold to the guild of something something we yi gi I guess and let's see this unknown energy signature and I'm really getting tired of this thing.
Yeah, exactly. So at this point, um, since we made a few changes with the mod pack uh, to make it a little harder to get, because things were a little bit too easy, especially for experienced players, uh, it was very easy to knowing the mechanics and knowing how to do things. It was getting it was getting very easy and buying refurbishing a mine for a million credits and then getting a thousand resources for every 30 minutes forever was a great investment um, so also uh, the depots were selling uh, resources at the price that basically you could buy a hundred thousand Zanian for three or four millions and or and um, or five millions and um, well when you can get to 200 300 millions in a single day of gameplay uh, it gets really easy and it gets and it breaks the economy because you can with that amount of money and knowledge you can simply go around refurbishing all the mines you can find and hoarding them to get resources and not have to mine a single asteroid and that would make the game really easy so we upped the price for the resources in the resource depots so it's very expensive to buy it now and we also increased the price to refurbishing the mines so yeah it make it made it a little more difficult to get uh, high grade materials like trinium or zanian trinium trinium i already managed to find a couple of mines um i didn't even need to um i've been defending that we should have uh access each player should be should only be able to have a single of each and that would help to keep things more or less balanced uh, as well as leaving uh, mines uh, for everybody else uh, but um, but at this point I did actually got two trinium mines because they were both in the same sector actually that sector had four trinium mines I took two left the other two but other than that i only have those two trinium mines i have a neonite mine and a titanium one i still need to find a zanian mine and that's it and that should be good enough for me to be able to start building like like a crazy construction builder like bob the builder for example, like a crazy builder who likes to build things one after the other. <laughs> well, honestly, what I do want is to... I'm not even that interested in making a lot of money or having a lot of resources. I just want to have enough resources to do the ship I have in my head. But... Yeah, it's a large ship, so... It will take to do it. Especially because of the systems. Um, so, doing the ship with Trinium and Zanian... I would say that... I'm going to need some... Two millions of each, probably. <clears throat> probably two millions of Zanian and one million of Trinian should suffice. I don't know.
Yeah. So, but anyway, I still don't think, uh, to be honest, I still don't, we still, we are still experimenting, of course, and it's, uh, it's a constant work in progress, so it's never actually finished or perfect, uh, things are always changing, mostly because new mods come out, uh, the existing mods get improvements and changes and updates, the game itself is still changing a lot, constantly, so... We are always tweaking things in the server too to make to try and balance things out, uh, and and at this point I actually still think that uh, the resources and the way to get them it's still not uh, perfectly balanced. It's still not ideal. It's better than having the mines at one million and then giving a thousand resources every 30 minutes or so or every hour or so but but now I think it's probably maybe a little bit too high on the high end uh, or maybe it's not it's just that I am having a hard time to find a Zanian mine to refurbish. But at the same time, if finding a mine to refurbish is mandatory to be able to proceed and do what I want, then that to me that's another proof that it's not exactly with the right balance. Um, but I guess in a way, that's also debatable. Because it might not be the right balance for me, but it might be the right balance for a lot of others. Um, the fact that it's not for it's not so well balanced for what I would like at this point uh, might not be relevant. Because Let's face it, uh, the game of the, the, the goal of the game is not to, get to have your bank account uh, full of resources and money. The goal of the game is to get to the center, but most of all is to have fun and be creative, do your builds, uh, fly around, be with your friends and play the game, actually play the game. And there's an argument to be made that um, things are actually good as they are because it forces you to actually go mine when you reach the high-end materials since it's the only way to get them in a relatively in a relatively speedy manner since finding a mine it's proving so difficult uh, of course um, some people will not like mining as, as much as others uh, I don't really mind it's just that I like to know where to go in a way uh, at this point so if it's mining, then it's mining, but if it's mining, then I need to set a ship for that. For that. I need to increase the angers, buy more minor, minor, minor fighters, and start doing it without wasting more time. So, the alternative, and it's also It depends. Uh, it, the, the size of your ship it depends uh, on on what you mean by effective. So <laughs> um, any 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 sized ship 
can be effective. Uh, the smallest chip can be effective. The biggest chip can be effective. The thing is, effective for what? Effectiveness of a ship means having um, all these stats right. That means your ship is effective and functional. Now, if you mean effective in terms of being able to survive the center and get to the final battle with the boss, you need a ship capable of... Let's say that you need a ship with at least a million shield to survive the center. Ideally, one and a half million shield to be able to fight uh, the center boss alone. Um, you can build a ship up to 15 modules, but I advise against it. Uh, you can build it, but... Um, but a ship with 15 modules will have a, a very hard time to first maneuver among the the asteroid fields and two because of its size won't be able to go through jump gates or wormholes so usually ships lose the capacity of using jump gates and wormholes around more or less 10 11 modules it's not so much about how many modules are there it's more related to the volume of the ship, but usually uh, to get to 10 to 10, 11 modules, you need a volume that is already too big for the ship to fit in a wormhole or a jump gate. So there's a lot of things to consider when you are going to build the ship to assault the center, um, starting from how you like to fly your ship, how you like to fight, uh, what type of fighter are you if you're more reliant on, on movement or if you're more of a tank and you need to have very big shields and armor or if you prefer to, to have a more nimble ship capable of evading fire. Those are all things you need to consider, but they are also very dependent on personal taste. Um, but to be to, to be able to provide you a short and simple answer, well, an effective ship means 1.5 million shields, 10 modules, uh, and probably at least four squads of fighters. It should also sport some turrets on it that are custom made, meaning uh, turrets that you made yourself in a turret factory and not just vanilla turrets. Because to be at the center you need the survivability that 1.5 million shields will provide, but you'll also see also need enough firepower to take down your enemies uh, fast enough, because in there and near the center, enemies will also recharge their shields and repair their holes as fast as you. So every time you retreat to recharge the shields, they do the same. They shield, their shields also recharge, their hull also repairs. So it's not just being able to survive, it's also being able to deal damage faster than they can recover it. So there's a lot of things to consider, but it's not something you really need to worry about because as you progress, you'll find out that to get to the center you'll constantly need to improve your ship, so by the point you actually get near to the entrance to the center, your ship will most likely be 
already a very capable one. Basically, the numbers I'm telling you is what people generally notice, is that, well, when they get to the center, usually they are somewhere between 1 million, 1 million and a half shields, 10 modules, 11 modules. The thing is, uh, for example, with the massive dreadnought, with 15 modules, it cannot get into the center by itself. Uh, for example, uh, what I mean is, uh, with a massive dreadnought with 15 modules, considering that the only way to enter the center is going through a wormhole, with a 15 modules ship, you won't be able to travel through a wormhole, so your ship won't be able to enter the center. You'll be able to take the ship there, but you'll need to enter the center with a smaller ship to get some Avorian, and then install a Niper drive made of Avorian on your massive dreadnought, so that the dreadnought becomes able to jump, do wiper drive jumps over the rifts, and that way it won't need the wormhole to get to the center, but that means that the only way is to get someone else or some other ship in the center first to bring you a Vorian to install on your massive dreadnought so that you can take it to the center. So yeah, it's possible to take a 15 models, models ship to the center, uh, it's just not the first ship you'll you'll get into there you'll need to take something else there first to get some avorian for it yeah ablative design uh regarding that um Remember that a ship that is damaged cannot be edited. And also that railguns bypass armor completely and multiply damage across several blocks. So they can effectively bypass armor. And there are some weapons that have special abilities to bypass shields. Okay, teleporters, 222,000 credits, they only have 7, which is very few. Trading posts, war robot factory, computation mainframe, body armor factory, I can almost bet it's all depleted. Someone probably already depleted all of these. Look at the amount of missiles that thing is firing. That's crazy. The amount of dumpfire missiles this thing is firing. I think it's dumpfire missiles. Either that or, or plasma, but I think it's dumpfire missiles. It is. Dumpfire missiles. Look at the crazy amount of dumpfire missiles this thing is throwing. It's a destroyer. I don't think I'd survive that that solve. It's a spread of missiles. The number of modules is dictated by the volume of your ship, by the mass of your ship. So, basically, the higher the volume, the more modules your ship will have. 
In fact, if you go to the sheet menu and you go to the module systems where you install the modules, you'll always have one more module that it's still not allowed to use and if you place your mouse over it, it will tell you how much volume you need to get the next module. So volume of 12,000 point of 12.5 million cubic meters required to unlock the next module. At this point, I'm at 1.74 million. I need 12.5, so the ship needs to grow exponentially to increase the number of modules. Then of again. What a stream of missiles. It's all dumb fire missiles. If this were, were guided missiles, that thing would be squashed already. Let's give them a hand. I think it's truly remarkable that an indie developer made of a one-man team was able to, pro to make a game like this and honestly just look at the amount of, of particles on this, on this sandbox so it's the amount of asteroids, the amount of missiles flying, every single bullet that comes out from every single ship it's the shinies from resources. Have you seen the amount of items floating around? It's just crazy. How... How fluid it all is. Despite it. And it's not that demanding considering... The tremendous amount of items you have floating around every single sector. Well, if you're at four modules, um, I don't know. I have no way to see it. I I'm gonna ah, man. Um, at four modules. To get to five, just over your mouse over the, the slot that it's still unable to be used, and it should tell you how much volume you need to get to the five to the fifth module. I think a lot of people play Eve, especially now that that has gone free to play um, I've played EVE online I haven't in quite some time years probably since I last played let's jump over here I think we almost have this entire network for this faction figured out and after it's all figured out I'm just gonna jump to a few of these yellow blips to see if I can find probably not I should probably get away from this area um, because most of the mines I saw around here were already claimed so it's very likely that whoever passed through here was very thorough 
to find them all, so I don't know. Either I go down or I go up. Further in, I can go further in, but more than likely I'm gonna find a rift around here. Well, Eve used to have um, a subscription uh, and it went into free to play less than a year ago. So I don't, I don't think it was that long ago, uh, six months or seven months, I don't know. But I don't think it's a year yet. Um, and I don't know how they, how they, they implemented that. How was the implementation of the free to play? What what sort of microtransactions did they implement, if any? But um, yeah, but if it's if it's a lot more complex than this, but it's also quite different. Um, it's got the same X feel, just like the X series. Uh, it's got all these elements of crafting and building and trading, but it's different in the sense that Heave as a massive gigantic producer and a development team behind it. Uh, this is basically an indie developer, a one-man team doing this game, so um, it's, it's a tough comparison to make. Um, still, yeah, it's in the same genre, space, crafting, um, exploration, factions and so on. But um, while Eve probably has a lot more depth in terms of trading and diplomacy and uh, um, and um, and business, um, it doesn't have any kind of crafting or building which is the main focus of Avorian. So, Avorian is literally, I, I said this yesterday, uh, Av Avorian is literally uh, a voxel game, like a Minecraft or a Space Engineers, but with a much higher focus on, on action and on gameplay. And the developer himself said it, and I think it nails the spirit very well. It's a mix between a next game and a voxel game. So... And it's a great idea. Because I think the two, th the two genres can, can marry very well. So... I love the X series, not the latest, <laughs> not... Uh, uh, the the latest uh, X game, but uh, X reunion and X pre reunion and Albion Prelude. Those were all great games, and um. That concept, together with the voxel building, it's a great idea. Even if we, if we can't expect this to have the same depth, like I was saying, in terms of of, uh, of its trading systems and, and so on, because it doesn't have a team of tens of people behind it. It's one guy. And I have to say, I'm very impressed with what he did with Evorian so far. Uh, 
it's clearly a work of love and it's clearly clearly something that he thought of and had the idea and worked to implement it exactly as he had imagined it and i have to tell you i i was quite surprised when i first when i first um installed the game and i saw that it was very small in terms of size in terms of the space that it takes um but it's got a lot of content. I mean, it's got it's got all the necessary bases to provide a great game. Everything else that that you can imagine can be added on top of this. Uh, better stories, uh, better missions, better quests, more elaborate ones. Um, better building, more modules, more weapons, different weapons, bigger weapons, smaller weapons, the ability to, to make your own fighters. Uh, man, there's a world of things that you can change and add to this game. Um, more than likely, most of this will be all done by modders and open-ended. Exactly, because it's a one-man crew and it's a, it's a small developer, so he will, he will probably need to rely a lot on his community. But I think he deserves it. The game is actually really good. And this is actually what I think early access games should be. It's obvious that the game is not finished. There are several things that are still being tweaked and changed regularly but um, but it's got a working foundation that it's already fun to use already fun to play and it calls for players to play it and help and see what's good and what's not and participate uh, and help him out so that's exactly what I think early access should be for But I'm <coughs> already talking too much. So, what is that? Transformator Factory. Uh, unknown Energy Signature. We have three more sectors belonging to this faction, apparently. I don't know if this is still from them, it's probably not, this seems like a different cluster already. So it might be that this is already another faction in here. But let's keep looking, so next jump will be over here. And let's check the trade. Teleporters. semiconductor steel tubes I should really buy a few because they are one of the ingredients to build my own turrets where are they selling there okay I don't think I have a lot of space now that I removed the tumor from my, from my ass like someone said And I have some lead, some servo. I should probably build a bigger ship. But I don't have enough materials to do it. I should probably change to something more like this. This would probably be more than enough to do some trading, fly around, 
and gather materials to do the ship that I want. But I don't have enough materials to do this. Yeah. 50,000 Avorian, 82 Organite, 45,000 Trinian, 795 Zanian. Yeah, not by a long shot. A very long shot. That's why I need Zanian. I need a proper stream of Zanian incoming. Twenty two. Really? I can only buy twenty two more of these. Is my anger that small? My cargo bay that small? Apparently it is, huh? Wow! Why is that, Kitsuna? Why are you thinking that you're gonna have to start from scratch? <laughs> yeah, it's time to grow a new tumor, for, for sure. <laughs> I have no space, so I'm gonna have to place a new cargo bay in the bottom again. Uh, but why are you thinking that you're gonna have to do the design from scratch? Are you having trouble to implement the angers in it? Just remember that thing I told you yesterday. You can always try to do your design uh, plan ahead and try to do it modular in a way that you can, if needed, break your ship apart in two or three pieces and copy past those pieces to resize and refurbish uh, like the ones I showed you yesterday like those engines that I used on that big ship that are designed to be modular so if you do things that way, even if you need to add something, you'll always have a little more room to maneuver in terms of, of refurbishing your ship without having to start from scratch. So I always advise people to do that, to try and make, make the designs more or less modular. Yeah. Well, uh, Zaxner, to answer your question, why not build a decent sized cargo bay into the design? Because I don't feel like breaking the ship to integrate a larger cargo bay at this point. Um, I really don't want to waste a couple of hours redesigning the ship again at this point. Not yet, anyway. Mostly because... this is an old design that was refurbished earlier in the last two days to be able to use in here to get some money 
and actually create the ship I have in my head which is not this one so I don't want to waste too much time with this ammunition 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 okay <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna do something like like what lo like what I had before what I had before was a little extreme uh, Because I kept adding with each new hole it was you, you need to understand that when I did that I had 1 million in my bank account and had a hole with a hundred with 24 thousand units of something and to make a profit of nine million so I had to do seven or eight holes so I started with a little hole of one million then I had a little more cargo bay because I needed to buy a little more and then I just get just kept adding more cargo bay with each new hole to be able to carry it all carry it all as fast as possible so it was really ugly although it was still functional no stat turned yellow or red so the ship was still perfectly functional was it beautiful no it was not beautiful was it symmetrical no it was not symmetrical. Did it look like a spacecraft? No, it didn't look like a spacecraft. Did it work? Yes! Well... Transformator Trading Post, Resource Depot, Plasma Cell Factory and Drone Factory. A Drone Factory is a very interesting thing. As long as they actually have drones, which doesn't seem to be the case. So... Drone Factory, maybe they do. And we just don't have where to sell them. Nah, they just they just have four. Uh, resource depot. Three forty three per unit. Transformator factory. They have a lot of transformators. Might be a good trade in the making. That's a gate. Let's jump over there to see what's in that sector. <laughs> yeah. It was Borg on the side of his father. And, you know. His mother was beautiful, but the father was a Borg. Let's jump... again? Or not? Seems like... it's a jump gate to nowhere. Okay, jump gate to nowhere, let's jump back, let's start checking these, ye these yellow dots, moving over there.
yes, that's also an idea, uh, Kitsune, making the the um, the extension of Cargo Bay. If I really want to make it not so ugly, I can. It's a little work, but I can. It's not that impossible. I can, for example, do something like... Like this. Hmm. Ah, I know. Yeah, well, the building menu is actually very simple, but it's got everything you might need to be able to build. You just need to know how to use it. Um, this is a problem they still need to address, which is the eat box for the things you bring out of the build menu that you saved previously sometimes don't uh, don't detect properly so the object ends up getting inside another block and then it can't be placed so we can try perhaps to fix that with some little 
tricks but it doesn't always work and it's not always a good way to do this instead of placing more engines right away we can simply look at um, the cargo bay and Rhenium cargo bay and now let's see so this is edge armor this is cargo bay so this is edge armor and this is edge armor let's remove it this is cargo bay this is cargo bay why are they separate? Because I didn't want them to go over the perpendicular edge. So, okay. I guess I can live with that to increase the size of the cargo bay. Uh, let's remove these two. Let's take this one out. Yeah, yeah, I'll pick you up in a second. Um, and this is directional cluster. So, yeah, it's what coming above. You're a cargo bay. Let's copy past... match block in your back okay and Okay, let's place them both with the same color so that we can merge the two. And this is made of neonite. So let's turn it into trinium because it's lighter. I said trinium, not titanium. Okay. And... Again, with the match block Let's increase it a little more. On size. And... Let's merge it. And... 
And now a Warhammer team built and then you went on you went your own direction. Well, remember to post a picture of that Warhammer ship. Uh, I already seen a couple. Um, I think there's one... Uh, one battleship from Warhammer... Um, on the Steam... On the Steam page... On the Steam forum for the pinned there's there's a team a pinned a pinned post um for people to to show their builds and somewhere in there there's a warhammer battleship that someone made i can't remember the name and you'll probably find in there things like the Ent like the enterprise for example or lots of ships from Battlestar Galactica and things like that. You know, people always... Fans of sci-fi always come in droves to these games and try to build their dream ships. And Star Wars ships also like this one. This is not my design. This design belongs to Berkey's. Berkey's 3 2. I don't know if he's online. Nope. But that's his design. I have it because he asked me to... To help him do some changes on the ship. But... Um, but yeah, you can find a, a few of these there. And also... A TIE Fighter. And a lot of ships from from several different uh, sci-fi series. Let's increase the cargo bay a little more. Let's glue it and just a little more why not it's getting a little too fat but oh well yeah, yeah, yeah. You're really asking to be destroyed, huh? Are you sure you want to keep doing that? Huh? Are you? I guess he is. I'm dead. Really dead.
back at the beginning. Well, let's just uh, real quick go get those modules back. By going into building mode, let's make the SSV. Um, SSV. Recovery. And let's build the ship. Like, I don't know. Let's make... Um... Uh, Something a little more manageable to get there fast. Or we can just rebuild what we lost. And go get our modules back. Okay, let's go get the modules. Don't do this, I mean... I wasn't obviously planning to die. It's a pain, especially if you don't have... I was, I'm not so worried because I knew I had the money and the resources to rebuild my ship uh, right away. And it's just a little pain, I lose some half an hour going back to the place where I was but um, it wasn't more problematic because like I said I have the resources and the money if you don't have the resources and the money it can be very painful so be careful with that uh, as you've seen they destroyed my ship in a few seconds. So let's um, real fast just hire some crew. gonna hire some crew to to drive the ship I lost my whole crew obviously the ship exploded so crew is lost fighters are also lost so a lot of money lost yeah 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 I never do insurance but if you plan on dying maybe you should because it will get you the full cost of your ship back in money of course insurance is not exactly exactly sheep either yeah I died Kitsuna I don't advise anyone to die <laughs> like I did but uh, yeah it can be very problematic if you don't have enough money to rebuild your ship right away, money and resources. Uh, if you do, what you should do is rebuild the ship right away. As you know, every design you make gets saved, so just rebuild it right away, hire some crew and race back to the place where you lost your ship to recover your modules and your weapons. They will be there. Uh, nobody can pick it up, they belong to you. But you need to get there to get them back. Uh, so... Let's hire some crew. Mechanics. Miners. Security and borders we don't need, but we can hire all these guys. Let's see. Yeah, we need to hire more. 
let's see in there we need engineers this is a mobile crater so let's go there equipment dock higher eh, we can get a few gunners there and then we can go to the repair station they should have engineers no but they have lieutenants okay and if you pull the video back kituna you'll be able to see that my ship died very 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 fast uh, after the shield was depleted damage to the hull was really really fast so you should always be very careful especially when you are that close to the center as i was because enemies in there can really, really do some damage if you are not paying attention. So... Let's go there. To... Hire some more people. And after that, I'm gonna do a little trick to get a little faster to... To my destination. And that trick will be to build my ship is so slow without engineers. So, lieutenants and sergeants. And regular crew. So... Higher crew. All of them. Hire nine sergeants, let's get four of them, and lieutenants, let's get them all. Need more commanders, okay. Okay, ship should be able to fly good enough. Let's place some weapons for the fence and plasma turret. Um, there's the turret. Double chain gun turret.
Okay. And... Hmm. Railguns. Yeah, okay, let's place... These railguns. And let's place these cannons. It's good enough. I want to race for the items and let's get hyperspace core. Let's jump. Let's go. A little travel. Really? Which boss did you did you defeat, Sleepy Tor? The AI or Boss Swox? The pirate. The pirate boss. Ooh, I should go to the to the smuggler and reactivate. Uh, the delivery quest. So which boss did you kill, Sleepy Tor? Was it... Uh, was it Swox? Pirate Swox? The pirate boss Swox the seventh? <laughs> oh, right. That also... I should have thought of that. Um, generator. We need more generated energy. Could it really be all that energy just for just for the hyperdrive? I think it's a little too much if it's if it's all that energy just for the hyperdrive. But it might be some module that is that is draining yeah, 2.5 gigahertz, of course, for the hyperspace upgrade, that's what. 
But it's fine, I want to get there fast, so it's perfectly good. Let's jump. This is where boss. This is where um, the smuggler is. So let's talk with him again. Yes. Okay. You have to take it. Blah blah blah. Yes. Okay. New mission: easy delivery. Uh, let's uh, see. No. Let's not. I don't have the trade module equipped. Um, let's jump over there. And... So, yeah, I want to go here. Um, where did I die? Was it here? Yeah. So, I'm right there. Maybe I should cut path through here. Instead of going through there. I just hope the rift doesn't cut my path to get to here. Ooh, a research station. I should, but I won't. I'm in a hurry. There's always a rift. Yeah, you're right. There's always a rift. But... I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed and I'm gonna risk it because either way going through the same path I went before uh, would probably probably take a very long time so I'm gonna risk trying to cut a little time out of the travel and get Back to where I lo where I lost my ship. It's mostly for the modules, more than any more than anything else. So let's see.
Oh, you're telling me to make the delivery here now, huh? Well, that's good, because that's exactly where I'm trying to go. But in half an hour, I don't know if I'm gonna get there. We'll try. If not, I'll have to look for the smuggler again. Ooh, jump gates. I guess I'm finding a new faction. They have... Resource Depot, Equipment Depot, Repair Dock, Anti-Gravity Unit, Shipyard, Transformator. Well, this seems like a place to do a lot of millions in trading. Unfortunately, I can't right now. Uh, my ship got destroyed. I lost my ship. Was distracted, didn't notice the shield had gone, and without the shield, my ship is very, very weak for the location where it was. So, without the shield, they shoot my hole in a few seconds. Um. Let's jump. So I lost the ship and I immediately founded a new one. Remade, reloaded the same design and called it SSV Recovery. Uh, let's jump again. Ooh, a rift. Man, 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 let's hope it doesn't spread too much. I can almost bet that it's gonna spread all the way to... I hope it doesn't join to this one. Nah, it can't. It can't join, it would be too big. No, don't you dare. Let's go. Let's jump. I have two hyper hyperspace hyperdrive upgrades equipped to increase the recharge rate for the hyperdrive, but the modules, the hyperdrive modules, really, really drain all the energy. So now, I loaded the same design, and then I slapped a ton of Viper drives and generators on top of it to be able to jump back to where I was real fast. I should probably even add more Viper drive to make larger jumps. But that's probably gonna up the requirements for crew and energy too. So... Here we go. One, two, 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 sectors. Thirteen sectors is not bad at all. Okay, we managed to pass the rift. Let's keep pressing to see if we can get down there. We can try to get here, catch the wormhole to here, and then drop from here to here. But I don't think we'll be able to get there in half an hour to do the delivery mission. We'll see. Maybe we can. Ah, look, this rift is big as a hell hound coming out. Man, I always have to struggle not to curse when I see these things. Look, this rift will go all the way to here. So, it's very likely that from here we have a jump gate reversing the rift because it's more or less in the middle. And this entire area without any single way to cross it, I just don't believe it. I know there is no way to cross over here. I did all these jumps. So, but it's very likely that it's possible to jump over here. Since the rift comes all the way to here. Let's cross to this side. Uh, no, they don't work on loot. Uh, loot has its own uh, set of rules. Um, basically, yeah, you can pick up the loot by proximity. You fly by and you need to be uh, uh, upon a certain distance. They get drawn to you and you pick it up. But when it's more than one player in the same sector, and when more than one player shot the ship that got destroyed, the loot goes to some kind of distribution process. So, for a small period of time, you won't be able to catch everything. You will only be able to catch half of it and the other player will be, will be able to catch the other half. But after a little while, um, everything becomes free game for everyone. So I don't know exactly the timings and how, uh, how the specifics work, but, I, but it's more or less like this, because I've already seen it happen quite often with me when playing with other people. But yeah, there's no easy way to make your ship collect the loot other than flying over it. A beam ray to pull all the loot could help, like you're saying. Um, if force turrets actually pull the loot, that would be cool too. 
but they don't. They only pull objects, asteroids and wrecks. Um I actually, um, with my biggest ships, I tend to equip uh, a big force turret to to try and use to try no to actually use it as a tractor beam to to draw enemies closer. And put them into range of my lasers. And it works because it actually prevents enemies from gaining distance from you. But not for loot, which is what you were looking for. So, this death has cost me about... It will probably end up costing me about an hour of gameplay. And... Well, in terms of resources, I can't say it cost me that much. I can't even tell how much did it cost. Uh, I can barely see any difference on the resources I still have, so... It can't have cost that much. But it's painful, mostly for the time it takes for you to get there again. And because of the weapons and modules. And to make it even more painful, now I find the AI when I'm not... Not even nearly ready to face it. Exactly because I lost all my modules. So... Yeah. I'm not gonna try to fight the AI right now. I don't even have enough crew for the ship to behave properly. And I don't have gunners to fire the weapons. So I'm gonna run out. I'm gonna just try to contact the AI. Ale. There seems to be no reaction. Okay then. I'm gonna leave the AI. So the AI is around here. Around this ring around this distance from the center that it's possible to find it and boss walks it's slightly less it's it's slightly further away from the center than the ai let's jump over here And there. Let's use this wormhole. That will take us there. And now, 
we're gonna have to cross this space to get to where we were. So, let's go. Let's not waste any time and start moving. <coughs> With a little luck, we can maybe get to the delivery. In time. What, in there? You want me to deliver that thing in there again? Hmm. Then forget it. I'm not going to deliver it in time. And... Since we are not going to deliver it in time, I don't need to carry this with me, because it will just get me in trouble. <coughs> Let's jump. And jump. And as soon as we get there, I'm gonna go to... To an equipment depot. To... To buy some fighters. Right here. See if we can find some salvagers so that I can salvage my own ship. Okay. We can start turning to east.
We are almost there. We are almost there. Almost at the sight, almost at the sight of our demise. We are gonna jump here first to hire some crew and to buy some fighters if they have them. And after that, we'll go back to the place where we lost our ship. I'm even gonna start by placing some.
What do you mean doesn't support? Oh yeah, I removed um a turret. Let's place it again. And I should have still salvaging. Zanion are better. Okay, Zanion are better, so... This is Zanion are better. Zanion Edge. Transform. There. And then salvaging turret. I have no more salvaging turrets. So it will stay like this now. Still don't have black. But it's unimportant now. Let's just go back to the equipment depot. The equip equipment trader and get some crew, buy some fighters, and go back to where we lost our ship. Okay, first things first, let's go to the military station to hire lieutenants, pilots, gunners, mechanics, miners, crew. Hire who? All who? All of them? Who else? All. What about them? Them too. How many? Uh, one, two, three, thirty-six. I guess. You need more sergeants, you say? But for that, I need a commander. Commanders, Captain, General, Sergeant. Well, we might as well get the General and the Captain right away. I like this Zanyan station. It's cool. So, ire and ire. 
but we still need commanders, lieutenants, mechanics, engineers. Captain, Lieutenant, Sergeant, Mechanics. I think that with these many mechanics and engineers available, I won't need any regular crew. But I still need a freaking commander. Finally, commanders. Well, uh, basically, just look around. Neonite is not that hard to find. Actually, resources in general are not that hard to find in terms of resources to mine. It's not that hard to find mostly because they respawn. Um, they are all disposed in... in in a ring around the center following this order. So iron on the outside, then titanium, neonite, trinium, zanion, agonite and devorian. So as you proceed to the center, you'll go finding them in this order. Okay, let's get Three commanders. Ouch! Sorry. And let's see. So, crew, this seems to be cool, although we don't need unprofessional ones. These are professional sergeants, we need lieutenants and sergeants. So, let's get lieutenants and sergeants. Okay, lieutenants. And here, gas collector. Wow, so. Yeah, but no lieutenants and sergeants. Neither in here, so. Lieutenants. Okay. Let's get more.
Okay. That should be enough for now. But we do need more sergeants. Sergeants. Okay. Fine. Now let's unassign all these regular crew members. Higher crew, let's get 26 mechanics. And in terms of mechanics, we should be more than good enough. Uh, let's look for engineers. There they are. Let's hire all of them. And let's dismiss all these crew members. These are untrained engineers, so let's dismiss them too. They are just regular crew. Okay. And we need pilots. And we need gunners and miners. So, not here, there's miners, and pilots. Yeah, that's exactly the right place. That's probably where I'll be able to get all the crew I need at this point. And also, Samurai, uh, I was thinking and I believe um, from what from what I've been thinking, uh, I was thinking on the designs I already have, and the ship I want to do, and this one I'm currently using, and the thing is, I have tons of designs already made, but almost every single one of them was made 
using uh, different thruster configurations and none of them is updated to to the current thruster configuration with directional thrusters and much less to integrate the gyro arrays and inertia dampeners so loading any pre-existing design will force me to have to redesign it anyway to fix that so redesigning by redesigning I might as well redesign this one which is already mostly done so the thing is I was hoping I didn't have to and I could just use this ship until I had enough resources to start building the ship that I actually want but since it's getting really hard to find Zanyan other than mining or salvaging um, I think I'm gonna need a bigger ship to be able to accommodate a few more fighters and a larger cargo bay for the time being Okay. Well, I have a ton of designs. Thing is, they were all made before um, the updates that brought directional thrusters, gyro arrays, and inertia dampeners. So, any of those ships, if I load them, they will suffer from having terrible yaw, pitch and roll. So I would always be forced to go to building mode to fix that. And if I am forced to do that for an existing design, then I might as well do, do that and go into the building menu for this ship, since it's already got directional thrusters integrated and also gyro array and inertia dampeners so it's really just a matter of increasing the size a little to integrate a little more cargo hold and a few more fighters but bottom line what i really didn't want to have to do was go into building mode again at least not for this ship or any pre-existing one. I really wanted to start building my new ship. I was hoping to be able to get the materials I need on this ship as is, but it seems like I'm gonna have to move it a little bit and change things a little bit to increase size, so we'll see. Um... few more miners okay let's see yes I'm on the better version so I don't know I, I have no idea if the blocks I'm talking about have already been released in the, the stable version but but yeah uh, the beta, the beta updates have released um, three new blocks in the past in the past week two of them yesterday um, or two days ago um, and the major changes were were those that I just said so introduction of the directional cluster that 
is more powerful than normal thrusters, but only provides thrust in two opposite directions. And inertia dampeners, which are basically brakes for the ship. They help the ship to, to slow down faster. And gyro arrays that help the ship rotate on its own axis a little better. So they help to do the same function as thrusters, but without positioning requirements. I guess we're good in crew, so where is the equipment depot? There it is, let's go there, there it is, you want it proof? There it is. I always remember that phrase from what's his name? Ambassador Udina. Uh, not that any of you probably has any clue what I'm talking about. Or maybe you do, I don't know. Okay, let's see. Okay, no salvagers. Yeah, you should. Um, this is early access, so... Um, there will be constant updates coming out and the developers also need our help to to use the beta branch because that's how how we will, it will mainly work to iron out problems and glitches is by making available the update on a first stage on the beta branch to see if it works, iron out the problems, and then release it on the stable branch. So, uh, of course, mostly it has the advantage that you get to see the, the, the novelties first. Um, the bad side is that you'll also experience problems before everyone else. Uh, and often... Uh, you, it will be you to identify some of those problems, but I have to say I haven't really seen that many problems on on, on the game uh, on that regard in terms of of the beta branch breaking something on the game as I've seen happened on other games not on this one so far Well, I don't have fighters to buy I don't take I don't think I have another equipment dock or I do I should have let me take a closer look just to make sure I guess I don't. Well, let's go... Time to move. Time to go get my modules.
yes, I don't know. I don't know how things are outside the beta because I've been only playing on the beta for almost since ever, so I have no idea what's been released on the stable branch. Uh, I was under the impression that most of what I've seen in the beta uh, was ending up on the stable branch a couple of days later, but I don't know. Uh, I do think that... Um, I do think you're right. I, I think I know that uh, these latest blocks that were headed are not yet in the stable branch. The the gyro arrays and, uh, and the inertia dampeners. I don't know if directional thrusters have already been released or not. Um, but yeah, prior to all of that, ships would look a lot like... Um, like this, with thrusters everywhere. I think I, if you you would have to slap thrusters literally everywhere to be able to to have some kind of control, and and now uh, these new blocks brought a different a different balancing, and not only that, but um, the 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 implementation of volume on the thrusters uh, was also important. Because people had a tendency to slap those blades of dressers, those pancakes of dressers, or those little blades of dressers on every surface to gain to gain mo to gain mobility, but um, but after the update made the dresser potency dependent on the volume those blade thrusters became irrelevant, so there was no longer a point in having those ships covered by thruster blades. It became a lot more sensible to make larger blocks of thrusters integrated into the ship's shape. And then, shortly after that, the directional thrusters, and now almost after that, inertia dampeners and and gyro arrays have really mixed things up, so at this point I don't think you even need to use thrusters if you don't have to, if you don't want to, so yeah. Okay, I need to concentrate because I'm gonna enter the place where I lost my ship, so Let's jump over here first. Let me check the weapons. Not good enough. Mining. I don't want a mining turret. I only have one salvaging turret, so I think it will have to be a mining turret. At least until I pick up some of my things.
Okay. Let's jump to the death site. Okay, three, two, one, go. Not really. Ha! Three, two, one, go. Ready, set, go. Where is the remainings of my ship? Right there! Ha ha! There it is. You want it proof? There it is. My dear ship, all broken and and destroyed. Actually, it's mostly still in one piece, which is a shame. Because I'm gonna have to... To salvage it. That's mine. And that module is mine too. And now I need to quickly get rid of these guys so I can salvage my ship. Whoa! This laser is terrible. Freaking reflecting. Jesus, this damn ship is full of lasers. Damn pirate raider. You're gonna die this time. You shouldn't have destroyed my ship. Shoot the turrets! Shoot the turrets! You better get away. He almost depleted our shields. Yeah, it is.
it's this idiot that destroyed me because I was distracted. into really, really, really small pieces. Now let's see my poor little ship. What was the damage? How did they get to you? I think I know. It's a problem with the design that I know of for a long time. But actually, it wasn't. Actually, it wasn't what I was thinking, so. Hmm. The ship is actually not in that bad of a shape. It lost some of the armor on top, but that's about it. No major systems loss. No major blocks lost. I don't get it. Yeah, it lost part of the thrusters in the head. So the cockpit was completely blown over, so yeah. In realistic terms, it would make sense to have lost the ship. But... In this game rules, it doesn't make a lot of sense, other than having lost completely the HP of the ship. And that's what those damn lasers did. So... Uh, which one is the salvager? Number two. Breaking my ship apart for salvage. Yeah. Yeah, I am, and with a very with a very small ship. So uh, basically, because like I said, I was trying to not have to increase the size of the ship until I have the resources to do what I want. But I guess I don't really have much choice but to increase it a little. At this stage. Uh, I really can't get distracted and allow my shields to go completely out. If I do, enemies will be able to mow down my hoe in a few seconds.
can't afford to waste these resources. Considering how hard it is to get Zanian right now. Midnight Blue. Okay, I guess that's most of it. Most of my poor ship. Most of it, it's gone. It's gone. Gone. How could you do that? So let's see, before we proceed, now that we recovered everything, let's... Uh, what is that? Ooh, that wreck seems full of uh, Zanyan. Let's... Um, enter building mode. Cargo bay, which were, which was, if you remember right, exactly what I was doing shortly before I got destroyed. So this gives me 185, 185 tons. I'm gonna have to do a different type of rework, but it won't be right away, so for now, just for remedy. this will have to do okay we gained some space in the cargo hold by merging these two blocks um, Okay. And 
now we might as well remove all the weapons again. And place it all over again. Well, we better get away first, because music has changed, pirates are coming. Where are those pirates? Ah, whoa, they're coming at full speed. Wow. They were really stretching it. This is wreckages of my ship. So let's see if I can. First, modules. Let's remove these, all of these, and equip my modules. The ones Demion sent me, and the ones I made. And weapons. Where are you going? Did you really think you could sneak up? Okay, uh, laser turret, laser turret, double Tesla turret. Let's place the double Tesla turret down below. Organite or better. Organite armor. Transform right here. And let's place the double Tesla turret here. the plasma turrets made a vaganite right there and the laser turret made a vaganite right there let's move they are already firing at me and the really really is capable of sucking out my shields. Let's see how powerful is this guy. Yeah, 1360 Omicron. It's stronger than my ship currently, but that's because I only have three turrets installed. If I now place rarity um, double salvaging turret exotic you can go hmm where
double salvaging. Double salvaging. Two of them with lasers. Let's place a few more. A lightning turret made of Zanian. Let's go up. And double railgun turret. Hundred and seventeen, ninety seven, forty eight, mm. salvaging turret, also legendary, so you can go down here and we better move. This is salvaging, salvaging, salvaging. So, and these 1.86 range, you can go to group 3. Same. Actually, lightning turret, it's not a Tesla turret. Lightning turret has a higher range, 581. Do wait, group 3. 3 3, group 3. And let's see what other weapons we got here. Nothing special, but plasma turret exceptional. And double plasma turret exotic. So let's place this plasma turret. in there and this one in here it's not gonna let me it's gonna require zanian corner we need another railgun there's one in here, 97, uh, 59, 48, 117, okay, can be you. Now, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, still empty. Um, don't worry. I'll take care of you shortly. You just hang on in there. You just hang on. Um, and... Eighty, sixty-four. Twenty fifty nine four turret cannons. Okay,
What else? Hmm. So let's place a quad plasma turret. Right there. Actually, I guess it's gonna have to be Organite to work as weapon holders. Let's place a quad plasma turret here. We gotta move. Let's place another one on the other side. And I think we have two more spaces. An iron chain gun turret. Not sure if that's very effective. Seventy one percent fire rate extra, so that's all there is to it. But very low damage, I bet. We'll test it, and we'll see. And the other one, let's place a similar chain gun turret on the opposite side, and it should be done. <coughs> it needs to be Zanion or better. Okay. We don't have enough gunners. Let's see. Time to teach a lesson to these guys. So 366 you go to group 3 and you go to group 2 to group 2 you will be group Four, four, four. Time.
time to deal with these idiots. I love these fast paced cannons. They don't do a lot of damage. But that's because they still need some research. Still, it's not bad. 600 per hit. So, probably somewhere around. Yeah, if they all hit. So, on this side, it's the iron exceptional shane gun. There should still be a pirate ship. Yeah. That's a big asteroid field, and it looks like there's been some fighting somewhere near those asteroids. There are some things shining. 
near the rocks over there. Wreckage, yeah. My salvager turrets, three of them together, go do shirt work of all these wrecks, mostly because they are all dotting and legendary. One of them actually belongs to Dinian. So I'll have to deliver it back. Let's see. What else? Now, yes, we are we are already pretty close to the center, so I'd like some advice or not advice, but I'd like to know what you guys think. What should I do? Try to find the wormhole to the center, which should be a little hard to find yet. We, we are gonna need to explore very well around here, around the center, to be able to find it. And... I also need to explore to try and find a mine. And besides that, um, probably another good way to try and make some money would be to consider finally, finally doing that production chain, but probably this is already a little too close to the center to do a base of operations. I'm gonna try to make a few more jumps around to see if I can find any mine that's not been claimed yet and we'll see then I can also turn back and now uh, go back and try to find the AI or the pirate boss
seems like we found a beacon.
this seemed to be a massive holder. It had a drone nearby, uh, a drone, no, um, a beacon nearby. Um, with a distress call message from the hauler saying that they were ambushed and their hyperdrive was not functioning. Seems like they were unable to escape and whoever attacked them managed to get what they want since the ship is a wreck and nobody is aboard. Okay, we lost a few turrets. So let's place it again. Which ones were? Okay, we lost part of the head. Let's repair it. Okay. Um, lightning turret. <laughs> Laser turret. That's plasma. Still two more, and it will have to be these uh, quad cannons or triple cannons. And let's play some integrity field generators to try and see if the ship gets slightly more resistant.
Who died here? Still, still trying to kill me. Oh, you're very weak. Yeah, they are in sync because they are not all on the same group. But if I place them all on the same group... They will fire in sync. Something is not right. Yeah, plasma. Okay. Since it doesn't support more, there is there is an asteroid there that I'm going to claim and sell.
Let's see if we can find a mine. finally found an abandoned Zanian mine. Going to reactivate it. Ten millions. Mine refurbished. That means Zanian coming in, so no need to refurbish any other mine. Okay. <clears throat> yes, you can claim an asteroid. Uh, those big asteroids you can only claim those big asteroids where you see the ones where you see NPCs doing mines or factories supported on those very big asteroids if you find one that is not yet belonging to anyone you can get really close to it, interact, claim, and then you can do one of three things. You can either build a mine on it, you can sell it to an NPC faction for some relatively good money, Early game, very good money. Late game, not so much, but it's still money. Or you can also pay half a million to move the giant asteroid to a different sector 
in case you want to get a cluster of them close together to build a production chain or something. Um, but for now that I already finally found a Zanian mine, now uh, I'll slowly begin um, piling up some Zanian. So, hopefully, by tomorrow, I will have no problems. To... To start building and concentrating only on tradings to get more money. while waiting for the Zanian to swallow. So... It's time perhaps to do some trade. Some trading to recover the bank account. R regarding the module, Sleepy Tor, the module to, to find the yellow blips on the radar that will allow you to detect the giant asteroids are modules like this radar upgrade show sectors with mass as yellow blips on the map this is a legendary one but you have since common of course common radar upgrade will not provide you the blips but I believe the green one will already be able to, to show you the yellow blips on the radar. So will the blue one, the yellow one, or the orange one, and so on. I think the only one that doesn't actu actually, actually show the yellow blips is the white module. But a radar upgrade, green or above, should show you the yellow blips. So, early in the game, it's actually a good way to make money, to simply go hunting for, for a few asteroids to sell, because they are not that, uh, that difficult to find, or that rare. <coughs> so, when you start, you can just move in a little, and then start to look a little more outside of the gate networks where most people usually go and just go for the yellow blips you and you are sure to find some large asteroids Ed Hunter aha the galactic collective of Nkawaki. He's a head hunter. Why is he hunting my head? What have I done to him?
Yeah, I believe you. Uh, it's just that... Like, I... I never use or rarely use... Um, white modules. I don't really know what they are capable of. Jesus, these guys are gonna tear me to pieces if I stay here. Massive cannons. I want those cannons. Drop them for me. Drop those cannons for me. I want those cannons. Drop them. Drop the cannons. And I let you go. No, I won't, but maybe you'll believe me. Okay, these guys probably can also repair O and recharge the shield really fast too. Again! I died again! Beautiful. So... Time to jump again. Luckily, <laughs> I already have a design ready for recovering this ship. So, let's make it. Build. It's fine. It's expected. Considering so,
Nah, it's gotta be down below. Okay. Let's go then. Um, you're gonna be... Hyperspace Core again. And... We're gonna place a little more. Okay. Yep. I crashed. I was in combat, but I crashed against um, a ship I was fighting on. I was fighting with a ship, with, a, with several ships, but I'm too stubborn to, to back off. And... Those guys were hard. And... But in terms of damage, it was more or less controlled. I lost control... was... on the mobility. And it actually... Um, sometimes... I've been feeling that a lot with this particular ship, I don't know if there's any influence of that with the new blocks or something, but it's like if... it's like sometimes the ship just um, gains a lot more velocity than I'm expecting it, expecting it to and uh, all of a sudden it's going a lot more... F a, a lot faster than I want it to and then it's a lot, diff a lot more complicated to, to quickly move out when you see that you're in a collision route. But then again, what it's also true is that this ship is very, very weak to fly in those areas. So... Let's just get some people aboard. And let's go get our crap. <laughs> the only thing that's more troublesome with the dying well early on it's always terrible if you're early game it's always terrible because you actually lose everything and more often than not you will not have resources to rebuild your ship right away so it's messed up but when you already have a lot of resources and you can just rebuild your ship like I just like I just did the only thing that's really a pain 
it's the distance. So, sergeants? Okay. Look, an abandoned iron mine. Does anyone want an iron mine? Nah. What I do want... And I think this, uh, this burst of speed have to do with the leg. Um, because you don't realize how much speed your ship has actually already gained, and then when it sinks, you're a lot a lot faster, you're going a lot faster than you were expecting. Um, but yeah, need to get, us get used to it. Thing is, it wasn't doing this earlier. Earlier, uh, I mean a couple of days ago, it's just got a little worse in the last few, last two days. Um, let's get some crew here. Okay. Mechanics. You need more sergeants. And lieutenants, I bet. Commanders. Okay. We need... <coughs> yeah. A neonite, a neonite it costs 10 million. Nah, neonite it's probably... How much does a Neonite mine cost, Sleepy Tor? A Zenian mine costs 10 million. A Trinian mine costs 5. A Neonite is probably... 2.5? 1? Titanium should be 1. One million and iron five hundred thousand. I don't know. 
I don't know if it's still like that, to be honest. Um, One million, yeah. So, we could use more mechanics, um, where is... There. Mechanics. Miners and gunners. You need more generals. More generals. Generals. Okay. Crew is at max. Um, we don't need these guys. Okay, so now it's time to jump using exactly the same route as before to get back to where we were. Let's start by jumping directly over here then we'll proceed through here yeah real quick let's start going and let's place some modules
how much energy are you using? Yeah, more than you are... More than you have available, so... Let's also place a small generator just for a short time. Same as before, right up here. And we're good to go. The AI, it's one of the mini-bosses of the game. It's a mini-boss, uh, and you should fight it and defeat it. But be careful, it's not an easy opponent. Um, she's huge, and as it breaks, the smaller parts that break off become chips of their own. So be careful about that. The, the, the hardest part of the fight is probably when she starts breaking apart. Uh, it all depends on the level of your ship and how strong is it. Because I don't think the AI scales that much with the player. I don't know if it does at all. I heard they were going to, to make it scale. I don't know if it, if it already does. But at this point, if you have the capacity to fight it, you should. Because she has a lot of loot, a lot of great loot for you to recover. In fact, that's what I should do. Uh, go back to find the AI and Swalk to destroy them and get the loot they have. Yes. Yes, I'm trying to die again. You ran straight into an asteroid. Yeah. Uh, did you insure your ship? You should. And I should too, considering that I just died twice. So I probably should do. Um, go over here on the top right, insurance plan. You can completely buy the insurance for your ship or pay it in small parts. You have the total value of your ship and the insurance price. So it pays up if you think you may end up dying because the insurance price is about one-third of the actual price of the ship. So you pay one-third of the total price of your ship, and if you ever lose it, you get the total price back. So it's not a bad deal um, if you think you're gonna be doing several risky things and that you might get destroyed. In fact, I know that I'm doing something risky, so I should have bought the insurance. But hey, we always think that we are so great that nothing is never going to happen, but I should have bought the insurance.
Yeah. Well, Sleepy Tor. Um, just, uh, just rebuild your ship. Slap a ton of just, di just do exactly what I did. Just rebuild your ship, or a design you have that is functional. Slap some hyperdrive on it and jump straight back to where you lost your ship to recover your modules and your weapons. Don't worry, because nobody else can pick it up but you. Um, but you do need to hurry to get there, because although nobody can pick it up, if someone passes to that area, um, the items get loaded, and they can despawn after an hour, so... Do you have enough money and materials to rebuild? But yeah, I think the ship is a little... the um, At this point, because of the lag, um, it's very easy to... to misinterpret the speed of the ship. And all of a sudden, when you realize she's already going too fast, or at least faster than what you were, ex you were expecting, and often you won't have time to maneuver anymore, which is what is constantly happening to me today. How many resources do you need? Check. Go to the building menu. Try to build it and see what resources it says you need to be able to build it. Check your mail, Sleepy Tor.
Did you get it? Okay, you should have materials. I don't know if it's enough to, to rebuild the ship you lost. But what I sent should be enough to at least build a small ship with shields and an average hyperdrive core to get you to jump faster to your crash site. It's a pain when this happens and you lose your ship like that.
see, let's see, let's see. So, we should be getting close to Hmm. To the wormhole, and then it's just a handful of jumps to where my ship was lost. Yeah. It happens. And the way the movement works on this game, uh, it's actually funny because almost always you realize that you're going to crash before you actually crash. But there's. But usually there's nothing you can do in time to stop it. However, there's one thing that uh, I didn't notice sometimes is that it's already happened to me a couple of times so when I suddenly realize that I'm going at too high speed and suddenly there's a object in my trajectory and I realize I don't have the time to evade it it's gonna be impossible. You should still try to either change the trajectory or slow down your speed. Because even though it might seem like you won't have time to do absolutely anything, sometimes the difference between slowing down just a notch your velocity and managing to do so, or being able to to crash not completely add on, but already slightly on the side, might be enough for for the difference between complete loss of ship or highly damaged ship. And I've actually survived a couple of times to crashes I thought I was going to die on simply by rotating the ship and allowing the crash to happen on my belly where there's less things to to be broken still took massive massive damage but the ship did survive so i'd say that often it's also a matter of knowing your ship and knowing uh, where she is likely to take the most damage when impacted on and try to provide the strongest surface to the impact 
in my case, usually in my ships is the belly. Another obvious thing that people, every, everybody knows, but people often disregard it, w not when they're building, when they're building they remember it, but then when they're driving, people generally don't remember that, is the, the starter block, so your fir the first block of your ship, uh, the starter block, is it needs to survive so if that block gets destroyed your whole ship dies basically if you erase the starter block your ship gets destroyed and you get sent to to the starting sector so of course uh, you should keep your starter your starter block very well protected in Eden but sometime, sometimes um, when flying people tend to forget the location of, the, of that starter block it's important because if you can avoid completely any kind of damage to it on a collision that might be enough to 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 manage to get your ship to survive so for me for example I have the starter block right behind the snack column so a massive impact on the top right there at the beginning of this hump might damage the starter block on the other hand any crash on the belly it's very unlikely that it will damage the the starter block so I often try to rely on that when I see that I'm that I'm going to crash and I offer the belly to to the impact. It's funny, uh, another thing that, um, for example, with experience you'll end up realizing this um, in your stats. For example, at this point, generated energy and required energy are both red. Generated at 24 and required at 27, so the ship is requiring more energy than it's generating. But this is not permanent, it's not always like this. The reason it's like this at this point is because the hyperdrive is recharging, so it's draining a lot of energy. As soon as it's filled up, everything goes back to normal, so generated energy 24 and required energy 22. Now, although the ship if, is functional, the difference between your generated energy and your required energy should always be big enough to support the drain the hyperdrive is going to make when it's recharging. So what that means is that at this point I'm not generating as much energy as I should, because 
whenever my hyperdrive needs to recharge, it drains power from all my other systems. I'm not going to do anything to fix it, because I don't intend to leave the ship with this giant hyperdrive in the belly. This is just to help me travel a little faster to my crashing site. Yes, yes, uh, protecting your starter block is always a good idea. You can actually uh, change the material of your starter block, but you can never erase it without destroying your ship. So the starter block initially is just a hunk of a cube of, uh, of iron hull. And you can transform it to, uh, for example, premium armor to be more resistant. And, it, and you can cover it all around with more armor for, uh, to, to keep it well protected. Uh, whatever you do, you should never leave the starting block um, exposed in the outer skirts of your ship. Because if it's fired upon and it gets destroyed, your whole ship gets destroyed. Okay, we are almost at the wormhole. So, like I was saying, you can see the two icons up there telling me that one my hyperspace engine is using up all my energy and two your ship is using up more energy than it can produce of course like i showed earlier this is just because of the hyperdrive because i am not generating enough energy to support the drain the hyperdrive causes when it recharges So, generally speaking, and looking at that more or less, I'd say that you'd probably need, to be okay, I would probably need 50% more energy generated than I actually require. So, if I require 20 energy, I should generate 30. Yeah, these are all things that you, you, anyone will learn from experience by playing the game. The game is not hard, uh, it's got a small learning curve at the beginning, but then it's just these small details that anyone will grasp quite quickly just by playing it. Now I need to jump again to get to the wormhole and then it's a big jump to here and from there we're gonna travel down to get here
Okay. Now we are going down. Fifteen seconds to recharge, and well, I should actually act jump over here. An abandoned Trinian mine here, which I'm not going to activate because I already have a couple. I'm gonna leave it for someone else. Same with that one. Let's keep jumping.
Yeah. Yeah. That's the that's the right strategy. Um, I also do that a lot. Um, I tend to change the modules I'm using depending on what I'm doing. Right now, I placed a couple of hyperspace hyperspace upgrades to be able to travel a little faster. Just like the trading module, I only have it equipped when I'm doing trading. If I'm doing combat, I remove it and place someone something else. But plus 8 and plus 7 exceptional hyper drive, it's a good it's a good boost. It's 15 sectors boost to your to your hyper drive, which is really great. Well, I guess we're almost there. So, should I go here to buy what? Only fighters, but... But there were no fighters when I went there earlier, so it might uh, it might be now uh, with the inventory refresh on the store, they might have some now. But I'd rather go get my modules first, and then I'll begin traveling in outer. from the center of the galaxy. It's too dangerous for the ship I have at this point in there, and I still have to find boss swaks and the AI, so... The only reason I moved so close to the center was to be able to, to find uh, a Zanian mine. Now that I have found one, I should actually return back a little to be able to improve on the design, perhaps set up a production line or two, and try to rack up some money to do some research and some custom turrets, so that I can equip my web, my, my ship properly. And while doing that, um, my resource mines will keep counting resources, and that should give me a good boost for building the ship I want to build. Uh, no, he, he keeps spawning, but, um, but the location is variable. He tends to spawn more or less at the same distance from the center, but it can spawn anywhere, really.
but I've already found Swox in the server, and I also found the AI, so... At least, I don't know if it's connected, it may have been just a coincidence, but from what I perceived from my previous experiences, uh, I will most likely find Swok in the same general area I found him earlier. I Earlier I was, was not strong enough to fight him, so I left him there. So, more than likely, if I go back to the place I initially found him, he will be not exactly in the same sector, but in the same area. And the same is true for the AI, and since I already found both of them, all I have to do is go back to the same area where I found them, to try and find them again. So that's what I'm going to do. Exactly. Jump where you saw him the last time. And look around there. You already know that mini bosses like Swok and the AI only spawn on empty sectors. Sectors that have no green blips or yellow blips or any stations or gates, so really empty sectors. So that's all you have to do, if you, you jump to the area where you last found him and look around the empty sectors near that place, near that same sector, and almost certainly you'll find him. Okay. Ah, no, that's not there. I want to go here. So, over there. I'm one jump away from recovering my modules, and then I'm gonna jump back to the outer skirts of the galaxy to try and find Swalks in the AI. I'm gonna look for them at the same time that I'm gonna try to do some trades. Since the area where I found them earlier has actually a couple of friendly factions with some cool tradings around. So since I only have half a million credits at this point. I really, really need to make some money. And it's gonna be a pain, because with only 500,000 credits, it's gonna take several holes until I have enough money in the bank to do proper trading. Okay, so that's where we need to go. Then I can jump over here to see what's in that sector. And there we go. Three, two, one, zero. I guess my hyperdrive disagrees. Yeah, it's being jammed, but there's my ship. No, Jesus. Th 
they make it ev very hard to see. I'm getting my modules back. I'm getting my modules back. Let's get away. I should have increased the energy generator a little bit because hyperdrive is draining all my energy so I can't really move fast or fight so I should really not have risked this let's just real quick place some fuel generator some trinium generator right there and let's see where's my wreck there Jesus Yeah, time you die. Yes, that's that's a piece of my ship. Hmm. Let's uh, arm this thing. Give it some teeth. Give it some teeth. Plasma turret. Organite here. Laser turret. Organite here. Cannons. Idiots!
these guys have massive cannons. So, Sleepy Thor, did you manage to find your wreck already? Or are you still traveling? Haha, <laughs> go away. Hello, this is the automated interaction system of the mobile turret merchant Yuya. What do you need? Hey, anything in interesting around here? Leave me alone. Ha! <laughs> You crashed again at that nearby station. Well, uh, is it easier to get to this time? Near a station, it's not. It's not a good place to be. Mostly because of other players. If they go to the station for some reason, if they go to that sector for some reason to use one of the stations, um, they will start the timer on your loot. Um, you know what, Sleepy Thor? You should do. Uh, you should play some. Some integrity field generators on your ship. And the way to do that. Is you grab some integrity fuel generator and it doesn't need to be too big you just need to make to, to place it in a place of your ship that in one or more places of your ship you can even make smallest blocks uh, and the goal is to cover your ship with this bluish field that will raise the HP of every block inside the field. <coughs> I also should do the same. I need to place a little more integrity field generators on my ship to 
increase the survivability of the blocks to make them more resistant, more resistant to collision damage. Man, these guys got reinforcements. I don't know how I'm gonna do to recover my wreck. Yeah, it doesn't support, but it will support. Oh my god. It's an equipment merchant. A mobile equipment merchant. Let's see, now that they are all to that side, let's see if I can find the wreck of my ship somewhere around here. Near this guy. Somewhere. I'm seeing little pieces and wrecks. So it should be around here, and it is. I'm just gonna speed up. The merchants won't fire against me, so... Let's real quick place... Uh, some salvaging turret. Devil Salvaging Turret. Salvaging Turret. And mining, 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 salvaging. Where is he? There it is. Let's get the ship. There it is, my ship. My poor little ship. Now let's get away from there. They're running like crazy trying to get me. Let's place some... <clears throat>
Um, how do you disband a ship? What? A ship that you built that you, and that you don't no longer want? Is that it? Uh, well, if you only have a single ship, you cannot disband that ship without being thrown back to your starting sector. If you do have two ships, both in the same sector, you can destroy one of them and you'll be placed on the other. Uh, to disband a ship, you need to remove the click on the safe mode. Because safe mode won't allow you to completely erase a ship. So, to erase, to completely erase a ship, you'll need to remove this safe mode. And then you can select the entire ship and just delete it. In alternative, you can simply look for your starter block, choose it, disable safe mode, and do the same, delete it. The resources used for that ship... Um, part will be recovered, of course, part will be lost. I don't know exactly how that works. I think if if you're inside the build menu and you erase a ship that you just built in that exam exact same session, you recover all the resources. But if you do it to a ship that um, was already saved and finished, uh, I don't think you recover the entire amount of resources. So my ship is suffering a little with the energy. Uh, shields over there, together with shields. Eh, I'm gonna have to organize this when I'm better with time. Now I'm pressed by these idiots. On another notice, I have to say that dying twice paid up. Um, paid up because somehow when I got here to recover the modules from my lost wreck, I found that somehow my modules had been duplicated. So that means that now I have two Zotan K3 modules. Two radar upgrades. Two trade modules. Speaking of which, um, let's see who's online. Uh, 
they really didn't like me. And they have a massive amount of cannons. Um, Sleepy Tor, I'm gonna send you a trade module. Do you have one? Do you already have a trade module to help you with trading? Let me know. If you don't, I can send you one. They really don't like me, but I'm trying to give them the spin so that I can go there and salvage the wrecks of my lost ship. My poor ship completely destroyed. Resist it! Resist it! Dank it! Dank it! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Improved trading system, that's crap. That only shows you the trade routes inside the sector you're in. Um, Use that one, it's an orange trade module, should give you uh, the ability to see trade routes up to 6 sectors of distance, and that should enable you to find trade routes with several millions of profit to be made.
Yeah. It really is time to build a bigger ship. Um, these guys are head hunters. So that's why. They keep coming. Uh, at this point, I think my my wreck has probably already despawned. So I recovered most of it. So no big deal. Um, no problem, Sleepy Thor. Just just use that module to to make millions of credits. You'll find out that it's a lot more easier with that module e equipped. Uh, just build a big enough cargo bay and look for the trades that give you high amount of profit. And even if at first you don't have enough money to haul it all in a single go. It's worth it. You'll begin multiplying your money and pretty soon you won't have any more problems with money and you'll be able to buy whatever you want, which is a big help to progress in the game and actually be able to build bigger ships. Uh, I'm gonna leave these guys behind. I'm very tempted to fight with them. But after losing two ships, I just don't want to have to travel all the way again to the center to grab my module. So let's move back. Ha! Beautiful. I have... Because when I died, uh, seems like the modules from my ship got cloned I now have two of it so I have two legendary radar upgrades so my radar range at this point two times plus eight two times plus eight deep scan range it's just crazy look at all those yellow dots up to here it's being jammed okay let's run away to get out of the of the jammer's range and then we jump okay Let's verify some of these areas. And now that we are a bit more comfortable, let's see these weapons. What is this? Salvaging. Salvaging? No, that's not the place for salvaging. nor there because we are gonna place an edge 
in here. Looks like the headhunters decided to follow me. I bet. Yep. Yeah. sector what's in here smuggler hideout okay let's jump over there A destroyer from the Guanwom. Okay, let's uh, jump. They really are following me, man. Bandits. Hmm. Abandoned Zenian mine. I don't have 10 millions to pay at this point, but we can save the locations. Thing is, what I really need is more shields.
Yeah. Sorry. Um, I was saying that with the trade module, uh, you still need to do the scouting, you still need to travel from sector to sector to have the prices registered. But after you scout the sectors, for example, like what I did in here with this faction, I basically went to all or almost all of their sectors. And that allowed me to see all the trade routes they had to be made. And when you're capable of doing that, you're sure to find at least a couple of trade routes with absurd amounts of profit. For example, in this place I found uh, a trade route giving 9 million profit and another one giving 6 and then 2 or 3 more giving 1, 2, 3 millions. So, in here alone, 15 million easy. Um, and these places, while I made all these trades today, tomorrow, if I return here, I'll be able to do it again, because inventories will get, fu will get filled again. Not immediately, uh, slowly over time, but in one or two days, I'll be able to come back here and do it all again. So, trading is really, really worth it at this point. Trading is actually the main reason why we ended up raising the prices for for resources on the resource depots, because getting money was so easy that we had to start making things more expensive. I believe that at some point these prices are gonna be more balanced and these profit margins will will be nerfed a little bit. So what's in here? Potato farm, gun factory. Let's travel to a different place to see. If there is... Some kind... Of civilization. And Recharging.
on this server uh, currently probably yeah one two three six nine twelve but it's an European server and it's 8 30 in the morning so 12 people it's actually not bad <laughs> for a max of 24 Okay, um, let's see, I'm going to the other side to see if I can find some friendly guild. Generally, um, this is about it. Uh, usually, on average, we have between 10 and 15 people. Of course, on the weekends, uh, that number swallows to 20 to 24. But... Um, Most servers uh, are limited to twenty four, fifty, thirty people. There's a couple that go to a hundred, I think, but I don't think they ever actually get to a hundred because obviously when they start getting to, I don't know, possibly 30 people, they start having a lot of problems with with sync, so there's no point in, in saying that it can get to a hundred if it will never be stable enough to get there. Um, but yeah, currently 12 people online But I'd say that players uh, that use this server on a regular basis, it's probably higher than 20 at this point. Okay, another abandoned cranium mine. But, um, who's there? Duabahu Commonwealth. Duabahu Commonwealth. Duabahu Commonwealth were. Weren't these, those guys somewhere? Hmm. 
maybe not. Um, let's see. Hmm. Trying to decide. Let me see this design. Okay guys, I'm gonna end today's stream right here. I've been streaming all night. I need to rest for a while. Um, I'll return after lunch to stream a little more of Avorian. For now, I hope you have a nice Sunday. Play a lot of games. Rest. Enjoy the rest day, and I'll see you in a few hours. See you all soon.